dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time and welcome back Last time on Missed Opportunities, Ghosts of Saltmarsh. The party limped home aboard the Sea Ghost. Um, Prion was able to expertly put her into port, and they began the process of repairing and outfitting the ship. Um, they spent a bit of time recruiting crew members. Mariah had a great success appealing to the veteran sailors, and Inaris had a great, potentially accidental success in recruiting a number of fortune-seeking dwarves, proving that with the right liquid in the glass, true enemies can become true allies over a few Many, many drinks, I guess. It's a good Alcohol life lesson. Alcohol solves everything. <laughs> it's Apparently. A good life lesson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At least in uh, at least in this little fantasy world we've created of Salt Marsh, it uh, it solved at least this problem. Um, and also, um, the Tiefling Warlock Nether had a fearsome encounter with a spirit upon the rocks <clears throat> on an island outside of salt marsh nearly claiming the lives of a few sailors and potentially sinking a ship in the meantime but um having spent about a day uh r recruiting outfitting the ship or beginning the outfit of the ship um you all go uh, i assume are you staying aboard the ship now or we can do it. Why not? it's up to you whether or not you want to rent rooms or stay aboard in the berths of your new ship uh it's in the How process nice of being sort ship. of unloaded it's not very nice is the problem uh um, it not was a do that. okay <laughs> just saying Sarayan can pay five silver pieces to stay in the uh I'll stay in the, in the snapping cabin. line which money is, is uh... no object did anybody <laughs> pay Good for you. <laughs> no, that is a good point. Pushed you out of the table. At... <laughs> Am I like just at... on the table? <laughs> yeah, at the end of the night, where did you guys leave Aeneas? Um... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> she got drunk. She passed out. Like, I think we were not my instinct is at some point to have taken Melvin out of there out of concern for the poor boy's well-being um melvin is still very confused about this whole alcohol business it's okay he doesn't um, he doesn't understand how it works serene would not have left an intoxicated lady by yeah. herself Priam so, would have picked her up if she was collapsed yeah yeah she would and have helped her get somewhere safe serene you would have also noticed that melvin had been drinking a few mugs of ale without any effect on oh, him apparently dang. he's okay. completely stone cold sober interesting i've never really drank before so i, I don't know if this is common i i tried some some of what do they call this this is this wine what is what is this 
What was it? Um, the claw wine that was at the other place. We're at a different bar. Oh, what's the speciality? Beer. Mm-hmm. She's never had bubbly beer either. So mm. I don't know how it would have affected her. Roll She's for not really pickups? familiar with carbonation. <laughs> What? Not really familiar with carbonation? Is that what you're saying? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, as you are able to end the night then, assuming you bring an heiress back to the ship, um, there are still a few beds in the, the mate's cabins. Uh, for you, Mariah, the captain's quarters are clear. Yeah. Serene, it sounds like you are staying at the, um, at the uh, nicer inn. Yes. Um, uh interestingly enough as she left the tavern talise was confronted um uh by a hooded figure requesting her presence at dawn at gelin prime waters along with anaris strider <laughs> totally he was rather stri <laughs> strider-esque um uh, Sorry. <laughs> I can avoid being seen when I wish. <laughs> uh, Disappear entirely. <laughs> that is a rare gift. Um, <laughs> and so... What are you guys referencing? What are the rigs? Um, just some little, like, art house movie. <laughs> what are you guys referencing? Yeah. <laughs> a little more caution from you, Mr. <laughs> Underhill. There's no uh, trinket you carry. <laughs> Wait, does this make me Pippin? We have to stop. What? Yeah. May probably. We uh, definitely have to stop before we hit prequels, but. Definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> so I will say while you are helping, some of you are helping um, carry Inaris back. Um, Talise is going back to the ship as well. Sarayan, it's up to you whether or not you branch off to go find a more luxurious place to stay. Um, in the night, you uh, see a couple sailors staggering home from the different taverns, a few uh, just night owls hanging about in the soft lantern light. Um, there's some movement in the night. It's not a, uh, it is not a dead city at the night. There's always a little bit going on. It seems like this is, you also know that Nether is gone, but you've been contacted by the sprite a few times. She's okay, but just hanging out for a while. But while you're moving back to the ship, uh, Mariah in particular, you hear um, a sound, some of the songs coming from the empty net, the rougher tavern of town. And passing a particular alleyway, you hear just uh, what sounds like a soft song and then a whistling sound that whistles a little tune. It is a code among smugglers mm -hmm. meant to draw attention, to catch someone's attention and um, indicate the intention for a parlay. Mm. Which tavern was this again? You had already passed the empty net it wasn't right. coming from inside the sound was just kind of emanating and as it was fading in the background you passed a few alleyways between residential buildings gotcha. and shops and there was just an alleyway and you heard just some muttering some sounds coming from down uh mm -hmm. down in the darkness and then you very clearly heard that melody yeah. whistled as you passed um Priyan, you got this I'm just gonna go check on something Sure. Yeah. Straight to bed, both of you. I pointed the basically unconscious Nene and Melvin. <laughs> okay. Make yes. I'm. I'll try to find the source of the whistling. You walk down this dark alleyway for a few steps and. Um, your, you have dark vision, correct? Uh, you are half elf. Yeah, I am a half elf. So there's sort of this misty gray as you step into what you know is to be complete blackness. It's the, the, the light is dim and 
the images are kind of um, a bit wavy, not particularly clear. And you see f coming from behind a barrel, and then you see behind you what you thought was just a bit of a stone, another uh, figure moves. They seem to have been concealing themselves in the alleyway. And you find um, two figures on either side, one a the form of a human woman in leather armor. And then in front of you, just in plain clothes, a man wearing a cloak. He throws the hood back. You see middle-aged with a, uh, uh, a short beard, hair black, slicked back, about shoulder length. And he smiles and you see two of his teeth on the right side uh, just barely glimmer in the dark as they are um, seem to be cast solid and silver. And he gives you this toothy grin. He says, Mariah Nerdress, I hear you're putting together a crew now. You've heard correctly. Spending a pretty penny, giving them 10% to that haul you got. Doing it the right way. Hmm. Figure we should do right by the people we work with as much as possible. Very honorable of you. But I've got a proposition from, well, call it from back home, if you will. Mm. We'll put up ten crew for ya. So long as... Well, we have an understanding that certain questions aren't asked and certain things can come and go from the hold so long as we're aboard. Interesting. Um, unfortunately, I find myself in a little bit of an odd position um, where... Uh, Apparently, I'm pr pr participating in a democracy. Um, so I'm going to have to run that by a couple people. <laughs> yeah, I know. Really, really weird. It's I was under the, the understanding that you were, well, the captain. Guess it's just a committee sort of thing. You've been in Salt Marsh too long, Mary Dress. I... <laughs> Sometimes it feels like that. But, um, trying something new. Which, for anyone who knows me, would know that that's not out of character. <clears throat> Fair enough. Well, should you find yourself at the empty net, well, order a couple of, well, order a barrel of grog for your next journey. And mm. upon delivery, you'll have the crew you need. I appreciate your offer. Um, might I know more specifically who's offering? You have me at a disadvantage, after all. You know my name. Well. I be Atherford, but most of my friends call me Silvergrin. Hmm. Fitting. It's nothing big, mind you. A few things here and there. Oh, and your ship is... is being so tight with that little prick Anders Solmore is a bit above reproach at the moment. Certainly an interesting position to find oneself in. Aye. Oh, and by the way, I'm told that your two of your friends are to see prime water in the morning. At least that's the rumor. If she ain't told you yet, well, consider yourself cordially invited at dawn as well. Interesting. 
cordially invited. I'm sure that's a very accurate description of how I've been invited. Um, good night. Tip my hat. And the uh, he just simply puts a hat hood over his shoulder, and the woman behind you sort of steps aside, and you hear a, the um, soft sliding sound of a blade being slipped back into the sheath, and they fall back into the shadows. Mm. A bit ahead of the group, um, Prion and Sarayan, you find the ship in um, starting to look a bit more bare than she was before. Um, the name, the first thing that's been done is the name Sea Ghost has been um, scraped off of the side. So you see no more reference to that previous name, though it looks like they are going to finish sort of repainting the hull before painting on the new name. So as of now, your ship is nameless and they are beginning to take down the yards and such, the different uh, beams that hold up the sails, completely stripping the ship down for repair and then rechristening and relaunching it. Uh, thankfully, there is still some furniture aboard. Um, three beds in the mate's cabins, one of which you can lay in Arison. And you'll find uh, two uh, soul more guards stationed um, at the gangway so that no um, intruders simply wander aboard your ship. But they regard you kindly and just simply gesture for you to go ahead on board if you would like. So um, is there anything else anyone would like to do this evening before bedding down? So. Ryan really wants to know what happened to Melvin, but she'll save it for another day. Um, Melvin's going to stay up and, and read some of the books that Mariah gave him. Um, not cover to cover, but sort of skimming through them at least. Okay. Um, and he, at some point, is going to go up to the captain's quarters and knock on the door. Um, knock, knock, knock. Okay, Mariah, it's late and you hear um, some the soft creaking of wood and then thumping on the door just as you begin to lay down in the captain's bed. What? <laughs> um, M Mariah? It's Melvin. Oh, shit. One sec to the door what do you want um I, i'm not sure if this was intentional or not but i th think you may have given me one of the wrong books um and he holds up the volume of erotic poetry fully illustrated <laughs> that mariah gave him amongst the other <laughs> books i forgot that was in there uh I, I, I'm not sure if you meant to give me this, um, but do you want it back? Uh, I mean, I eventually want all of them back. But, I mean, it, I don't know, you might learn something. Yeah, there's, there's a lot in there that I didn't know already. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was intentional. No. Well, okay. Well, okay. Not in that way. You're a bit young for me, kid. Let's be real. I I didn't think it was. You, you, you think I thought you meant to proposition me? I don't know what you meant. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Did you think I to get? No. I just thought that it was one of yours that you had accidentally given me. Do, do you want me to take it back? I don't know. Should I? <laughs> yes, yes. Give it back to her. <laughs> <laughs> You're not there. <laughs> oh, God, please. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, I'll, I'll just reach out and 
pluck the book out of his grasp. He doesn't try to hold on to it or anything. He's just very confused. If you ever do want to actually read it, you can. Okay. But I'll hold on to it if it makes you nervous. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, go back to Sorry. Tensor's whatever, whatever. Sorry to wake you. Have a nice night. Yeah. Awkwardly walks away. <laughs> Didn't need to preface awkwardly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I feel awkward. <laughs> just, just quickly, a massive thank you to Obsidian Risk for 500 bits. Oh my gosh. That is a D20 inspiration. Yeah. All right. I, I was uh, just actually going to do something funny during that. I was going to, while you opened the door, I was going to say, ah, tell him to go away. Tell him we're busy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh oh. Sarayan, we're tied. Um, <gasps> do you, ha you don't have inspiration because you, it's yes. probably been so. Well, I have inspiration marked on my sheet oh you've already got it then yeah it's been a few sessions though so no i don't, I don't. yeah <laughs> whatever's all convenient right. let's roll play. off roll a d20 Sarayan. all right we're gonna roll our crack and die uh oh i didn't i made a mistake oh my i've made a mistake <laughs> should i roll you, my crack for not and rolling your crack and die i, I know this. what a mistake amateur right. hour over here Me behind too. the d or behind the dm screen Pop. <laughs> Four. I'm inspired. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you. Who was it that donated to? Obsidian Risk for 500 bits. Thank you very much. Woo! Thank you, Obsidian. Thanks. That's awesome. Um, cool. All right. So we finish off the evening uh, then, unless there's anything else. And morning and dawn comes. Um, you have a pounding pounding headache in eris when you awaken churning in your stomach you think for a moment that they've set sail without you that you are um tossing on the waves once again on your way to somewhere but when you get your head straight and look and stand up and you realize the deck below you is in fact completely unmoving and it is the fact that you are somewhere brutally between still hammered and hung over the next morning maybe not quite all the way there even so the the ground is toppling beneath you your stomach is roiling and your head is pounding I'm gonna go oh, God, bang God, on a door <laughs> And then the sound, doom, 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 doom. What? Up you get. The dragon's waiting. We have a dragon? Oh, God. By the gods. Oh, and she'll stumble out of bed and just sort of shuffle to the door and just open it. Oh, shit. You look rough. Have you looked at yourself lately? I. Eh, sick burn. I don't know. <laughs> Step out of the way if she does that. <laughs> and you hear, uh, indeed, actually, the, some heavy footsteps coming on the dock and some loud voices uh, uh, that say, uh, Right! But here to work! Where's the where's the left half throw anyway? The left Dragon Oh dear <clears throat> Ah there she is Oh there she is <laughs> She goes to the edge and just blunt over the side of the ship. Um <laughs> when she as as she's um <laughs> Relieving herself of this contents of her stomach, I um, uh, sneak up behind her, and as she's standing up, I uh, sing into her, her, her ear, Morning has broken! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to turn around and, like, face to face, her nose almost touching. Did you have to do that? Kind of. You're an ass. 
Sometimes, yes. I'll lean over and I'll smell her hair. Your hair smells nice, though. Thank you. I remember the last time I washed it. Yours doesn't. It's got carrots in. I didn't ask you. <laughs> and at the mention of carrots, she goes over again. And uh, uh, there's a chorus of laughing dwarves coming aboard. Some of them stowing their things uh, different places in the ship, seeming to just make making themselves at home in all of this. How many dwarves do we have? Seven. Seven. <laughs> Why did I know you were going to say seven? Okay, okay. Wait, seven you of you. Actually, what I... What's your names? What are What's you your names? About? Let me guess. What are your names? <laughs> We've got Dragon and then who else? Dargon um, and the rest list their names for you. They are dwarvish names. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is it Dargan and six more or seven more? Uh Dargan plus six. Dargan plus six, thank you. Party okay. of seven. Dargan party of seven. Um. <laughs> anyway, um so it, it is dawn. It is I think dawn. That means that um uh, Nene, don't yeah. uh, don't you have somewhere to be? I mean I gotta go. <clears throat> I gotta go find that idiot that left the map. What? Yeah, where am I supposed to go? <clears throat> Are you asking me? I wasn't no, sure. Asking asking. Okay. <laughs> she has. She, I, did Tony tell me about? Last night she did, so it's up to you how much. How drunk uh, was I? Because if I, I mean, was like five deep, you were. I mean, you were the one playing the character as borderline unconscious, so I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> she wouldn't remember. She would have no recollection. All right. uh, you've got a. She early just knows her own meeting plan. with someone. I mean, it would. It'd be really helpful if I knew who. I'm leaning in real close. Uh, <clears throat> killing prime water. Well, this is going to be delightful. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm coming. Why? I've got this. I was cordially invited. Ugh. Which, depending on who says that, has some very specific undertones. Maybe I'll puke on his shoes. Don't really recommend that, but if you really feel so inclined. Hmm. Eh, it depends on it depends on his attitude. Okay. But if he's got a bad attitude, then I'm then I'm going to project on vomit. Love it. <laughs> Did he say what this meeting was for? I was just told that y'all got approached. Yo. I don't know what the heck happened otherwise. What's a y'all? <laughs> you all? It's a contraction? The linguistic okay, contraction? Okay, I don't think you... It, I had about eight before I lost count. Who is you all? You and Talisa. It, where the hell is she anyway? Fuck if I know. She's supposed to not let me do that. I. We were invited. Now? Are we all invited? <laughs> I let it go. <laughs> yeah, can she go I instead? I don't think you do. <laughs> like. No. Because you're such a shiny and wonderful and golden-hearted person, and we don't want to taint that. That I could be so easily dissuaded from who I am. That's insulting. I'm coming. Great. You have to wait outside. It's custom. Just, just go with it. 
Okay. Custom. <laughs> <laughs> you cool with that, or are you going to stay on the ship? Can't hear you, Liz. Sorry. But you know what? You two, you go ahead. I'll just, I'll head out. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you never. <laughs> uh, uh, lead, lead the way. Directions. You think not. that the others could probably come, but at least part of this audience is going to be private. So oh, it's up to you okay. guys how you want to do this. So um, probably easiest to. Go with everyone Consolidate. at least. All right. Okay. Well, map. let's go, crew. <laughs> Even the okay, dragon. I'll, I'll take notes. <laughs> okay. So indeed, you will be. You will go down. It's a nice morning here in Salt Marsh. Um, the fishermen are just beginning to cast off. You can see some of these. Uh, ships are being rowed out, some of them putting up sails in the fair breeze that is today. Um, and the cloud and sort of harbor fog is just beginning to dissipate under the sun. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Though, um, in Eris, the brightness of the sun is probably not quite so pleasing to you in particular. To the rest of you, this is salt marsh at its finest. The air is blowing the right way um, so that you are getting some of the higher sea breezes swooping down and casting out so you don't get that sort of um, rotten brackish beach smell, um, none of the decay of the shore, just the freshness. It is a good time to be alive and in salt marsh right now feels good and refreshing. So you make it to the uh, largest house in town, the standing home of Gellin Primewater. You are expected. The um, butler lets you in immediately. And you see in the distance down his sort of grand entryway, um, the form of Gellin Primewater holding a coaster and a teacup, and he seems to take a sip, looks towards all of you and as, and regards you all carefully as you enter, kind of counting the, the party and his gaze narrows and he whispers something to an attendant near to him and then withdraws into another room. You are kept waiting for a few uncomfortable minutes, just standing there in the lobby not told to go anywhere, but just standing there until someone approaches you and invites you to the back, to the drawing room where you've met with him before. And when you get there, you will be instructed by the same butler that he wishes to speak to Talise, Inaris, and um, Moriah privately first before the rest of you go in. So is Talise here? or no? Just because she was summoned, so we'll say she's okay. here, she's privy to this conversation. Cool. But is a little, uh, doesn't have much to say at the moment. Oh. Not a morning person. <clears throat> just quickly. So you will, pardon? Just quickly, we've just started a hype trade, people. What? So the Kraken's been you. unleashed. So Keep it going has. if you get it higher. Um, just just so you know, we start out, what do we go? 5, 10, 20? It's 10, 10 20, 30? 10, 20, then 30. 30 is right. the level 4, level 5 hype train. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you and that, if we get to a level 4 or level 5, we can do cool. a $30 gift card to the Kraken. That's so much dice. Nice. Thank you guys that, for the support. You guys are amazing. Um, we are just so glad that we, for you know, all that you give us that we can give, uh, with Kraken Dice's help, we can give back just a little bit to the awesome supporters out there. So uh, thank you guys. Giveaway uh, confirmed and quickly. potentially increasing by the break. Thank you to Pixie for 300 bits for a D6 oh. inspiration. Pixie. Oh, oh, hang on a minute. We've just had Ben and... Michael coming. <laughs> oh, and Snake Spinner. Oh my god, it's gone crazy. Oh, Hang on. it's crazy. <laughs> Let me put these put this down. 
so I can actually read them. Guys, they're so generous and we love you. Thank you. Oh, well, thank so, you so we've much. Got five gifted Melvin. subs by Snake Spinner. We've got was that ten? Ten from Mr. Music, which is Michael. Thank you, Michael. Wow. Two, three, two for three for Ben. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you very very much, to guys. You are very very generous. Thank you to Haunted Chronicles. Dr. Spells is just coming with 500 bits. as a D20 inspiration. Hey, level 5 That's train. from our Wednesday game. All right, we better start rolling initiative well, here. We've My just hit level 5 train. <laughs> <laughs> we've just a completed. A level 5, you said? We completed a level 5 train, I believe. Oh, my God. You guys, are, you guys are crazy. So All thank right. you very much, guys. That is a $30 gift card to Kraken Dice's website that we can give away. You can also use our code GETSTUPID. We will, uh, uh, after the break, we will do the first giveaway will be the, the dice. The second giveaway will be the $30 gift card. So, again, massive thank you. That's so cool. Crazy. The got best. The Absolutely the best. Right. So, the first one I rolled. Uh, so, the D20, we're just going to go down the line here. Um, uh, Melvin and Sarayan, do either of you have D20 inspiration? Sarayan, no estaki. Nope. <laughs> All right. And you uh, won the D20 inspiration against Serene last time. You're right. Time. So Serene good point. Well, yeah. um, mm -hmm. So we'll have a roll between the two of you, and then how many D6s do we have to get One about? D6. All right. So, guys. Um, Mariah, you get a D6, and we will figure out in a moment here uh, who gets surely. the D20. Um, you already you have one from last week. I session. have one from last week that you We're said carrying that I can them roll over. over. Yep, yep, absolutely. So then Inaris... Nice. Yeah, D6 inspiration. So, the three of you are invited in to, again, the sort of um, <clears throat> drawing room here at the Prime Water Manor. Um, Gellin himself is sitting in a well-crafted, high-backed leather chair at a desk. You see open behind him is a large window with a small balcony. You have seen him on this balcony before. He can step out onto it and he has a perfect view of his docks. He's oftentimes out there surveying what's going on on his family's private docks, ordering people around, barking orders, or just quietly surveying what is going on. But now he's at the desk. His analytical gaze is fixed on all of you and he is sitting with this cup of tea and sipping a bit. It's so kind of you to accept my invitation. Did we have a choice? Everyone has a choice, Nene, but we could hardly look down upon the councilman's very gracious invitation. <clears throat> well said, Ms. Nerdras. Now, in Neris, Moriah, Talise, I am looking to hire a capable crew. To accomplish? Securing salvage. Something of mine that was, well, had gone missing. I assumed with great consternation that it had been permanently lost. But I've just received word that the ship has been sighted. Derelict. And I have information as to its whereabouts. I need a capable crew to retrieve an item aboard it. Interesting. Um, favorite. And to return it to I, me. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Peter. What you just said was he um implying he or not implying he outright said that this was his ship. Or did I? He implied it. Yes. He implied it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to attempt. Highlight that word attempt. <laughs> an insight check 
to see whether I think that is true. Okay. If you would allow me. <laughs> and with a whopping 10, I don't think I get very much. Um, you, you think he's being, this seems straightforward. Um, there's okay. nothing, uh, just th the information he's presented right now is very basic and it seems okay. to be coming off as true. And so he says, and before it's, are you interested? Um, I, I look to Nene, um, well, as, uh, staying in line with my dear compatriot here, um, I think it really depends on what the compensation is. I will give you 10% of the value of what you find. Twelve. This part is non-negotiable. And to be clear, is that 10% of the total things that are aboard or 10% of the single item? It's difficult to calculate the exact worth of what I am trying to retrieve. To you, as they are, they're worth almost nothing. Deeds, promissory notes, contractual obligations put into writing, notarized. To me, well, they are worth a fortune. How does 10% of a fortune sound to you, Nene? A little bit above charity work, I'm interested. You will convince the rest? It's a job. The job itself is above board. And I'll see why not. I'm glad it went this way. I don't see why we can't continue to have a cordial relationship in spite of how things have perhaps gone in the last couple of weeks. Well, I've learned a lot about you, Ms. Nerjas, and about you, Talise and Daenerys. Oh, what you brought you here to Salt Marsh? So, as far as I'm concerned, no one else has to. Let's invite your companions in, finalize this deal, and keep it that way. Yes? Look over at Nene and Talise. People Little already hate eyebrow me. raise. They that? already hate me. I said they already hate me. I'm drow. I don't give a shit what he knows, but... But no one has yet laid a hand on you, nor accused you of anything greater. That could change. Good. Let's invite the rest in. I, he yells out to the uh, door person who invites the rest of you into the meeting room. Ah, good. Triton. It, he looks at you, Melvin, and is about to say something and then looks very confused. Im. What am I missing here? Um, my, my name's Melvin. You that denied much I my know. request for a guide into the marsh, so you told me to help them with their task, so I'm just, I'm sticking with them for now. Why are you blue? Oh, right, this, um, we had a little bit of a mishap over, um, in some wild magic fog. Uh, and... I shouldn't have asked. It's complicated. And in some ways not. Prion. Newcomer. How is that fortune amassing? It seems like you're wearing a lot of it. Awfully excessive for a would-be fisherman. 
Well, I found this. I just paid for the repairs. There's no way I could afford a new set. Fuck, Jane. I am... No, I do not doubt that. I, uh... Must imagine it cost you quite a lot, though. A lot of things you could have done with that money. Interesting choice. I am... Optimistic. Very good. So there's a job. I'm going to hire all of you. Assuming you agree. To recover some salvage for me. I have coordinates. I have a bearing. And, well, I can see to the repair, partial repair at least, of your ship before you embark. That would be generous indeed. Um, I did want to ask one other question. Is there a um, particular time frame that you're looking for this to be accomplished within, or is this more of a as soon as possible? As soon as I have your agreement, I will send my crews to work for 24 hours on repairing your ship. We can skip past the little party and paint the new name on it for you two, and you can get ready to make your fortune. Well, I don't know, I, th I think that everyone was kind of looking forward to the, the christening seems important after you know a ship like that with having such a reputation you good, know good for crew crew morale too you know what else is good for crew morale money hmm there's the sailor what do you think guys Works for me. Is everything on board with it? I look to Mariah. Uh, on board with the job? Aye. It's very straightforward. We retrieve something that he thought was lost and now has been found. And we get paid. As far as jobs go, it's rather straightforward. Sounds good. Um, can, can I ask a question? Is this, this shipwreck, is this underwater? No, no, no. It has been found floating derelict. Oh, okay, good. Hence my concern and desire to, well, salvage it before it becomes a much more difficult and expensive operation. Makes sense to me. And, and what are we supposed to be recovering from it? I don't think you said yet. There will be a strong box. Likely kept safe down in the hold. Perhaps even within another safe compartment. Find it. There will be a magically sealed Iron chest. Bring that back to me. And I will do a, well, estimate of the worth, and you will be paid 10% of that. When the ship was unfortunately lost, almost a year ago now, I was expecting an influx somewhere of 90, I suppose. 90,000. I expect the value's closer to 100. I hope that's got your attention. I looked at 90. Sounds good to me. I've got a question for you. How about a private meeting? Just me and you. 
I have something I want to discuss with you. Ooh. That can be arranged. Well, in 24 hours you'll set out then. Is there anything else we need to discuss? I will have my personal quartermaster uh, send you the bearings, last known location, and the reported weather patterns of the last sighting. Sounds good to me. Sure. Thank you. Right then. You are welcome. And our meeting? Well, you all can go. Apparently, Miss Inaris and I have something to discuss. Make good choices. <laughs> Spin about and leave. <laughs> I'll follow Marae. I will leave. <clears throat> right? Uh, you all leave and. Um, Serene was. Are... No. What? It's not important. Go on. Oh. oh. What is it? What? Oh, go, go on. No, go on. I won't. I won't. No, I won't God ask the question. It. Just go off. We can't take your first. You guys begin to leave the room. Um, the doors are open for you and then shut. All right. <sighs> so, you don't like me. I don't like you. That much is known. It's cool. Whatever. We'll do this little fetch quest for you. I do what my captain says. Smart choice, right? There's a lot more to this that you're not telling us, and I know there's something up with that box. I don't really give a shit. I just want the money. However, there is something that I would rather have. I'll give up my portion of this and I'll do another job for you for free but I want that goddamn bridge make it happen imagine what I, you can do with a drow rogue at your disposal uh, imagine I could hire her to return my lost property oh then... I could say no you could. You could. But I wonder, I'm an open-minded person. I have traditional views about what I think Saltmar should be, but I believe everyone deserves a chance, even you. There are those who are not so open-minded as me. There are people like that in positions of great power here in Saltmarsh, respected, of great influence. I wonder what Eliander Fireborn would think and how quickly Manistrad Copperlocks would agree and just how long it would take them to convince dear old Anders that the fact that you are a fugitive from Baldur's Gate is of danger to this city. We don't harbor fugitives here in Saltmarsh. We're an upstanding member of the Lord's Alliance now, apparently. Apparently. I want that bridge. You're in no position to make demands. Well, this has been a lovely chat. I delight in having my goddess open that chest unless you have any other negotiations about the ownership of that bridge what are you going to do with it <laughs> you're welcome to try awesome I have your permission later and she just gets up and walks out fucking asshole Swear to God, and she'll open the door and just slam it shut. <laughs> Fuck him, and just let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that um, you see a couple of servants who are in immediately startled by the fact you slam the, slam the door behind you, but then as you 
utter that curse and move that kind of have a smirk on their face. It seems that it is not the first time someone has stormed out of this particular office <laughs> saying those words and then uh, uh, storming out of the particular villa. So soon behind you guys, you see the um, hungover, um, heavy-footed Inaris, uh, not heavy-footed uh, as an unstealthy, but just probably stomping angrily <laughs> towards all of you. She's pissed. As you are reunited again with a new contract in hand, proverbially. Are you okay? I want a word with you when we get outside. Okay, <laughs> words for everyone, apparently. <laughs> What have I done to become so blessed? He's an asshole and he won't let go of that fucking bridge. What is he going to do with a bridge? What is it's he going to do with the bridge? Then just give it to me. That. You... <laughs> okay. Um, have you owned property before? Whatever I take is mine. Does that count? No, I mean like a place. Like that plot of land, I have a piece of paper that says that this plot of land with this specific dimension starting from this stream up until this tree is mine. I'm not a matron. I don't own shit. Okay. So people who own land on the whole tend to be very possessive of that. I told him I would do this for free. Land is expensive. I would do an additional job for him for free. Land that is her is home, Mariah. Expensive. That's Nether's home. That's all she has. I'm not you debating ever lost that. A home? If We're not going to have that conversation. Um, my point is, it's not as simple as saying, I want bridge. Give me bridge. It's pretty damn easy because he just took bridge. No, he bought it for what I assume to be an excessively gross amount of money that maybe only Sarayan would think is normal. I'm going to open that box. He gave me permission. Somehow I suspect that that was not explicit permission, and I also have a really, really sinking feeling that if it's magically sealed, it will probably blow up in our faces if we try. Then he doesn't get it. No bridge, no box. No box, no bridge. He's not like, going to give it to me anyway. What do I have to lose in this position? A lot of other money. <laughs> and also potentially our lives if it's one of those explodey boxes. Then I'll walk off to the edge and open it that way. I want the bridge. I'm Does anyone kidding. else have it? Okay, that I used to, this conversation has probably gotten loud enough that other people can hear. Does anyone else oh, definitely. have like commentary on this? Because I'm not getting anywhere. I was just enjoying seeing you struggle. <laughs> That's a smile. Two words. <laughs> Fuck you. I accept that. Ah. Uh, and Iris, anyway. it's a lot of money. We don't have that sort of money. Maybe one day we can buy the bridge. But for now. Let's take what we can get. Fine, but I hope he dies. And she just stomps off. I look to Mariah. There you go. Tactics. Negotiations 101. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I opened that jar most of the way for you, mister. <laughs> <laughs> can you see it? Oh. She's still going. Like, she's just walking. Oh person walks gosh. in front of her, get out of my way, shows him out of the way, keeps going. <laughs> and Anaris just goes off. Uh, uh, DM, um, yeah. Um, on our way out, as we're leaving and Anaris is staying behind, I would uh, like to tug on probably the like sleeve of uh, Sarayan, because I'm quite a bit shorter now. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and say, um, I heard that there was a temple here in town, and I wanted to go check it out. If we're leaving tomorrow, I'd like to do that today, if possible. 
Do you do you want to come with me? I I've already been to the temple, um, but I'd go again. I really didn't feel like I got a really good sense of the architecture because when I first brought it up, I brought it up to um, to Talise and I said I just like truly between the two of us i just wasn't that impressed with the architect but she seemed really offended so i mean maybe there's just something i don't understand about it so yeah i'd definitely be willing to go back okay. but my first impression was that it just wasn't but i mean again maybe i could be i could be wrong so i'm also not much of a you know religious person so i don't really know what the protocols are for like showing up at the temple i don't know if i can just do that I mean, I pretty much just did that, so. <laughs> okay. So yeah, well, this, we should we should go over there then. Great. Then walk off. Yes. Probably before an Eris even gets out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the meeting. Yeah, we left. We're gone. <laughs> <laughs> we were told so... we're not allowed to come in. I never came in. We just left. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, weren't you so, there for the the bit where we signed or signed though I mean that's what I was going to say was that because she was told it's custom she was just like no it's custom I'll stay oh <laughs> she <laughs> just <laughs> stayed outside <laughs> no I'm good <laughs> oh thank you it's customary that I stay outside <laughs> so she just stayed as the servants just uncomfortably looked at you there just <laughs> the door guards she yeah was, doing her normal thing of like ah, kind of like walking around again very tactile so she's like touching the walls she actually is interested she was interested in one of the servants attire she's like what an interesting fact do you mind and before the servant could even answer oh, no. she was like <laughs> <laughs> petting the what fabric. wonderful textiles right yes the like very, taking notes the very <laughs> moment that before um uh, you, excuse me. The very moment before Melvin tugged on your shirt, you would just notice that um, apparently in all of your like following around or going around and looking at tapestries and the vases and the artwork, you had just noticed that there all this time a servant was following you around right behind you with a little cloth and cleaning off everything that you touched, <laughs> just polishing it, repolishing it, and you turned around and they just were giving you a very disapproving look, polishing the uh, face of a bust that you had just put your hands all over. Then you hear the, then you felt the little tug from Melvin and then <laughs> um, went on your way back out. So are you guys headed to the temple then to try to, um... all right. It is quiet. At the moment, um, there is no one here at this little run-down temple uh, just out on the coast. There is a alcove. Um, or I, the building itself is a small sanctuary with faded frescoes. You can see almost a water line where the water tends to rise up to at certain points. Um, right now it is low tide, so the floor is uh, pretty clean. Uh, none of the offerings that you've seen before, which tend to just be left scattered for the tide to carry out. And, um, <clears throat> but also the figure of um, Valkor has been rotated to face out to the sea as opposed to towards the sanctuary, which is what they do when he is um, being worshipped. But in, in sitting there in his alcove, he is staring out towards the sea. It is pretty peaceful and uh, the familiar old, salty, grizzled, robed figure of Welgar Brinehand is there just kind of bustling about um, at the moment, he seems to be sweeping some dried seaweed from the tiled floor off the side back into the water. Little sort of humming a gruff little tune under his breath. And on, on the way over, Melvin would have uh, shared the details of the agreement we just made. Also, since Serene wasn't in the room. Crane was busy learning other things. <laughs> <laughs> On the museum tour. tour. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the temple, huh? Mm-hmm. 
and if I remember correctly, it's pretty stark, isn't it? Mm-hmm. The yeah. frescoes are faded. You can still make out some oceanic scenes, most of them depicting a sort of mythical mortal version of Valkor in various uh, circumstances. One of him, you know, posing boldly on the prow of a ship, a map and a compass in hand. One of him um, with a large trident in his hand, um, fending off a what looks to be some type of sea monster, but that part of the fresco has been kind of um, scratched away. You can't exactly tell what he was fighting. One of them, you even see he's um, with a crew leading a number and you see a uh, leading an, uh, a number of other beings. Some of them uh, actually make a religion check, Melvin. As you look um, at this last fresco. Just a brief reminder, we still have to roll off for that other uh Oh, good point. Yeah, well, you guys are here taking in the beautiful, well, the worn scenes, at least, of the temple. How about both of you roll a d20 to see who gets the full inspiration? The other gets a d6. I have a 13 on the Kraken die. Mm. I got a Oh, appropriately, because I get a D6. You do, <laughs> right? Indeed. Yeah, it matches. So thanks to our amazing viewers, um, Melvin has the D20 inspiration and Sarayan has a D6. So. But uh, Melvin, why don't you go ahead and please and roll a religion check, a knowledge mm -hmm. religion check. I've rolled a 16 on the die plus six is uh, 22. <clears throat> Okay, so you recognize, indeed, um, one of these figures uh, crewing along with the human incarnation of Valkur is indeed Persana, um, who you would have known to be the deity that Sarayan worships. You also see a few others that you would um, recognize. You... Um, you see, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting some of the, uh, the deities of Tempest, of sea, of various races to, um, a dwarven god of the sea. You see many of them, so all sort of working together. Sorry, what's going on? Oh, you're laughing at Jade showing off the Kraken, the <laughs> Leviathan, as it's called, I believe, so... Anyway, that is what you see. And Welgar. Welcome back, Triton. And what on earth are you? This is my friend Melvin. Smurf. Hi, I'm, I'm a half elf. I know I don't really look like it at the moment. He had a, he had a, well, should we, are you calling it an accident? What are you calling it? I don't know. I guess an accident. Yeah. He had um, an accident, I guess. Had a bit of a run in with some wild magic. <sighs> the Fey Fog. Yeah. That, mm. uh, That's alliterative. I like that. She writes it down. <laughs> <laughs> that it is, I guess. Well, what is it that Welgar Brynhan can do about it then? Um, well, I was wondering if you knew how to, um, well, reverse magical effects like this somehow. And more specifically, I was wondering if you could teach me. I'm a bit of a magic user myself mm. if you could like write down how to do it I could learn from that I'm sure and I'd pay you being, of course he's being shy he's great at magic oh I'm, I'm okay he's at least okay Melvin I don't believe that you and I conjure 
powers in quite the same way. It's something that's been given to me after a lifetime. Yep. Not something I could teach you so easily. Well, I'm what offerings do you make to Valkyr to receive this cleansing? Um, well, I don't really know what's customary, but I, I do have some gold, um, and, um, yeah, I have some gold, uh, I've got, he starts pulling things out of his pocket, he's got this, this twine, Sarayan and, offers her hands to grab whatever he's pulling out, and okay. <laughs> this, this pearl and this diamond, small diamond, um, what else do I have? Um, you, oh, I have do you have some... any like good information in your notebook? Oh yeah, I've got all sorts of information. Um, he's well traveled. Hey, well, I'm from Neverwinter. I came from Neverwinter right here. I don't know if I'd say I'm well traveled. But... He's well traveled intellectually. I have read a lot of books. Yeah, he's um, read a lot of books. I I know. I know some stuff about uh, the magical properties of gemstones and about uh, magical herbs and flowers. Wait, I know what some... was that, that book you mentioned that you tried to bring back to, 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 to what's, I'm sorry, I forgot her name. She's, she says she's our captain. I don't remember. Mariah? Mariah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you'd yeah, be interested yeah. in the contents of that one. Oh. Um, I, I, <laughs> I have this uh, treatise on the, the demigod Luz, if that's interesting. That's an old script there, lad. I believe that's an I. Use. Oh. Oh, you're right. At least I better hope it is. Anyone writing a book about a demon lord and writing his name in lowercase is asking for trouble, I'd say. Oh, that's that's fair. Probably safer to just do it in all capital letters. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so, the customary offering be the equivalent of about ninety gold to remove a permanent curse upon a person's soul. Do you, do you have the ability to craft a scroll of that? I've, I've learned some stuff from scrolls in the past, and I'm curious as to how it works. <laughs> if not, that's fine. I can, I'm happy to pay for the, the removal and then for a scroll in addition, if, if that's what you'd prefer. If you're keen to learn, I can see what I can do. But I can't promise anything, and it may take some time. Oh, of course, I know that it's not an instantaneous process to make a scroll. See, I told you, he's very learned. Triton, you've uh, discovered echoes up here in the air, haven't you? What's that? Never mind. Uh-huh, okay. Right, sit down. To look up later, echoes. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain when we leave, don't worry. Oh, good! Right, Blue and Coral. Let's get to it, then. Thank you. Do you still want your condition removed? Yeah, yeah, that, that'd that be nice. Can, can right, you put let's... me back to my right height, too? If it, it made me shrink a little. Yeah, he's not normally this... I mean, I was kind of short to begin with, but... If I remove one thing, it'll remove it all. Okay. Great. Thank oh, you. the complex I can't take care of, if that be a thing. Short man complex, you know. Anyway. Get over I'm, here. I'm still growing, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm a growing boy, it's fine. <laughs> That's the spirit, son. <laughs> and he says, I'm over here now, and he... Le he asks you to come right up to the edge of the temple where um, uh, the stone drops off 
at a sheer edge and there's just waves and water below. Um, actually, not waves at the moment. The, the water is pretty calm. Let's have a look at you then. And he kind of grabs you by the scruff of the neck and pulls you forward and holds your head over the edge. And he looks down, his old salty hair and beard kind of hanging down next to yours, and you can see him studying your reflection. Melvin immediately starts to panic. Sarayan is padding <laughs> along behind him, much in the way I imagine Princess uh, Zora did when she was inside the fist. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you see that old leathery hand just clutching the back of Melvin's neck as he holds him over the water, Is this um, forcing him to look down. Necessary? Quite necessary. Okay. Uh, I feel like it's important to note that I don't know how to swim. Please don't drop. Please oh, don't drop. He me. can't swim. Hmm. For what it's look worth. down, Melvin. Maybe the, what do you see? I see a lot of water. It's okay, I'll save you if you fall in. Then may you see my reflection. I see. Ah, yes. That. Look hard at it. What do you see? What do I see, DM? Um, as you stare at it, you see the, um, you see yourself and the image stabilizes a bit, even though there's that, um, rippling motion to the water, the image sort of stabilizes and then you see the color of your skin return to that normal pale and you almost see yourself grow a bit in his hand, um, as, as, as his, it almost looks in the reflection as his hand moves up as if you've grown a few inches. I see myself going back to my original height. That's who you are then? What do you see? Uh, does does my skin color change again? Yeah, it looks normal. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's, that's what I normally look like. Then prove it, and he throws you off the edge into the water. I scream. Oh my god, Saray and jumps in after him. <laughs> he, uh, the old um, priest extends a hand, uh, an arm really, just blocking you, Saray, and from going any further. And he what? wheels his hand around. No! Why? Let him flail. No! What if he dies? He can't He swim? will not die. At least oh. I don't think so. How long? Okay, okay. How long can I wait before I jump in after him? Because be I quiet. Have... Okay. <laughs> uh, Melvin, <laughs> the water is cold. You you crash down into and deep at this point. There is no bottom that you find. You flail around in this chilly water and you feel panic oh. through your body. Do I have time to cast a spell? before I start drowning. So, you can try, but you are underwater right now, especially if you and can't I, surface to swim. I do so. not know how to swim at all. Okay. So I, I don't are, know how to keep my head above water even. You are sinking so, in that case. Okay. Um, can I attempt to cast Alter Self? To um, give myself gills, specifically. Yes. Um... So, the water, as soon as you open your mouth and begin to articulate, you realize that in canting this, first of all, with your your shaking jaw, through the panic, through the coldness of the water, and the fact that you are incanting magic words into the water, you realize this is, this is difficult. Make an arcana mm -hmm. check. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'll spend my uh, d20 inspiration. Good that. choice. Yeah, just in case. Rolling Kraken dice. I'm glad I spent the inspiration because I rolled a natural one on one of those. Um, <laughs> I have the 17 plus 8 is 25. Ooh. 25, yes. So you are able to slow down the incantation, which allows you to precisely speak those words that you need to. 
It comes at a toll, though. You let all of your air out, and as you are going to the end, you realize once you get to the end of casting this spell, you've let every ounce of air go, and your body hits that panic. Your lungs burn within you. All reason just kind of disappears, and as you finish casting the spell, all you can do is inhale, and you just hear, <laughs> you feel this water coursing through your neck and then out the sides of these gills, and you feel the oxygen returning to your body. Had you failed, you would have given up every ounce of air within your lungs, and you would have been instantly drowning from trying to cast a spell underwater. But as you were able to complete it by carefully doing it, you find yourself able to breathe. Sarayan, you are looking over the arm of the old priest, and you see Melvin struggling, struggling, begins to wave his hands in front of himself um, very fast, and then suddenly just kind of goes still in the water for a moment. Is he okay? So Rayan makes and a start to try to get to the edge of the cliff to jump off. She says, no. I think... And then you see a little bit of motion again. He really doesn't know how to swim, does he? I'm very bad at lying. He does not know how to swim. Damn. D <laughs> and she tries to run <laughs> into the water again. Well, and he kind of just lets you go and jump down I'm in there. I'm coming, Melvin! <laughs> Melvin, you hear this enormous crash of water above you and your coral-colored armored friend panically swimming down to get you and Mel melvin is still sinking because he oh despite the fact that alter self gives him a slim swim speed he still doesn't know how to use it so he's just <laughs> sinking saran swims towards him and grabs him around the waist and begins to try to pull him back upwards okay you're able to um do that because saran has a swim speed at you move slower, but uh, you're still able to haul him up to the shore. And you notice that in this, he is returned to his normal coloration and to his normal height. Um, and uh, also has gills for the moment. You look like you used to, but are you aware of... And she points to where are the gills on his neck. Can I breathe air? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you still have lungs. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't lungs think about that. <laughs> cool. Uh, um, are you... You're amphibious. I mean, I, I've never actually used that spell before. I always keep it prepared just in case, though. It looks like uh, you did a, a good job. You did it right. Yeah, I mean, I still don't know how to swim, but at least I'm not going to drown that way. Oh, uh, yeah, it's good you thought about that. Maybe I should learn some. I can teach you. Oh, really? Yeah. That'd, that'd be helpful, I think. At least cool. enough to keep my head up above yeah. the water. Yeah, because I won't always be here, you know, to just jump into the water and save you. Yeah. yeah. But thank you for jumping in and saving me this time. <laughs> I appreciate it. No problem. How else would I get all the knowledge from your books? Also, I like you as a person. That's good, thanks. Sure. And I start to shake my book out. It's yeah. it's waxed. So Can I help? <laughs> She's like flapping <laughs> in the air. It just never ends. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll go we'll go back over to the yeah. temple then, um, to pay and um settle up for potential scroll purchasing I guess uh so if he will expect the 90 gold mm -hmm. donation and then um he will he says he will try to work on it if he's successful um he will let you know and okay so he doesn't want any um, find it any payment to nothing up front no he's Great. Um, I've removed 90 gold from my character sheet we're all set okay good um put my height back to normal thank god 
Serene on the way out takes some money that she has brought with her and also offers it to the priest and like looks at him like she has done him just a huge favor. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> That's the sort of vibe. She doesn't say that, but. <laughs> um. He, he under his, he kind of <sighs> and shakes his head and says, uh, um, <laughs> something you can't exactly hear what it is, but it's somewhere in there says proud and noble race or something like that, but maybe a little bit baffled and maybe a little bit sarcastic. Um, <laughs> and Sarayan, um, of course, being as obtuse as she is, is just like, oh yeah, this guy knows what's up. <laughs> so so echoes, um, they're this phenomenon. It's uh -huh. <laughs> Go ahead, the end. And we cut. <laughs> yeah. cut As we come back to the rest of the group, um the there's a little bit of tension on the docks as the prime water repair crew sort of overtakes a portion of the Solmore dock, uh bringing their own boat around with uh um different planks, uh, a new yard to to put on, the, to replace a cracked one on the Sea Ghost itself as they repair um, 50 hit points from the hull quickly and will repaint, finish the repainting in a very quick, um, efficient manner and then paint the name back on there. Um, was it Pixie's Fury? Indeed. Yes, indeed. So the Pixie's Fury game. has now been painted upon the hull of the ship. No longer known as the Sea Ghost. And you guys do now have that um the Sea Ghost yeah. sheet. I've put the um the hit point levels of the different parts. Actually the helm is in there too. The should um okay. so I should uh make a note of that as well. Is it full? Full health, so um, you can full make health? a note of that. The helm is yes. Uh, the helm or the hull? What? So there are different parts of the ship. You can attack, and when you're in ship-to-ship -ship combat, you can actually attack a specific part of the ship. So, by the way, did you guys go? For, you went for the ballista, right? So the yes. ballista is installed on the front of the ship. Okay. At at um, full AC. The hull is now at 250 out of 300, and the sails are at 90 of 100. Okay. Uh, if I can f look right here, um, character sheet. So the helm is 50 hit points out of 50 hit points. If you look at the actual character sheet of the Sea Ghost, um, I think you guys can all pull that up, right? Yep. Yeah. Yes, we can. You should see the ballista, you should be able to see the actions, the speed, etc. Cool. So we should update, the, at least currently in mine, it says the hull is at 200 out of 300. Yep, you can edit that. I can edit That's that. That's why okay. I'm, yep. Great. I, will I believe so, that. right? Are you able yep. to? I got it. Cool. There you can keep track of that. Awesome. Yeah. That is, um, I will we'll change the name to, from Sea Ghost to Pixie's Fury. Fury. Excellent. All right. So now uh, you guys have a quest. Um, the rest of the day, they will spend repairing the ship for you. Um, is there anything you want to do beside before the next morning and when you depart? Um, um, we don't have to RP this, but for what it's worth, Sarayan will definitely want to talk to Melvin about, like interview him about his experience after being in the fairy fog, the fey fog. It's like, what yeah. was it like to be a different height after you've been the height that you are? And how did you feel about your skin turning blue instead of the, the color you're accustomed to? Things like that. She just really wants to get in his head. It's an unusual yeah. thing, she's never seen it. So you guys see this pair walking towards the ship again, just um, Sarayan 
almost just not looking where she's going really just fixated on this person walking right next to her and just going taking notes taking notes taking notes um it is fascinating <laughs> amazing <Sorry. laughs> besides that anything else you guys would like to do before the next morning um so i i will stop at whatever purveyor of alcohol is closest to the docks um i will buy three bottles of something that's cheap um and i take those and as the sun is starting to set i sit myself on the um whatever portion of the ship is actually faced out to sea mm -hmm. um towards the west um i uncork one bottle um actually i, I uncork all three of them um take one sip from one of them and then pour out the other two over the side of the ship into the water and then i will um set the bottles down and continue just to drink the last one on my own and just kind of watch the sunset okay and Neris will be in her in her room lighting incense to the raven queen Mel Melvin actually would go looking for Prion um, and would ask him, um, I'm still kind of new to this drinking thing, but it seems like Anaris was having fun last night. Um, I'm wondering if you know how to have that much fun while drinking and whether you could teach me how. A side note for those of you uh, just tuning in, um, Melvin, amongst his many other mishaps with uh, um, wild magic, is also unable to be intoxicated for a few weeks due to wild magic. So, yeah. It's nine days. Or nine eight days. days now. But so, has that yeah. changed? Okay. Oh, I thought this was removed. a permanent fixture of Melvin's no. being. <laughs> was that a curse as well, though? Because that might be removed. Um, I did not say it could be removed by remove curse. I don't believe so. I'll double check, but I don't think so. Oh my god, um, so Melvin doesn't realize he can get drunk at this point? Yeah. Yes. He's never drunk before this. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> this is bad! <laughs> oh, this is going to end badly. I'm not sure what's going on with you, Melvin. But it is fun to drink responsibly, kids. Uh -huh. <laughs> but do you think it was fun in the morning when Inaris looked like she did? and fed the fishes last night's dinner no, no it didn't didn't look like fun but it's not fun but i wasn't feeling bad this morning and i had quite a bit last night hey but you was a bit blue and a few inches shorter last night i'd be careful well that's true well um would you be willing to go to one of the establishments with me and um Make sure I don't go overboard, I guess. Sure. I buy the first okay. round. Okay. Maybe Serene, we'll do some did dancing. you want to come with us? Ah, I'm here. <laughs> Serene is like, so she has gone to sit somewhere quietly to just kind of like think but she's definitely been watching this conversation happen but again she's like not used to being included because shocker Serene was not the most popular fish in the school <laughs> so, <laughs> but so she is like you know what it's like I, I hope we've all been there when it's like you're like looking over like oh I hope they'll invite me I'll hope they'll invite me and so she has no chill she immediately like closes her book stands up she's like yeah I'm yes I, I would really I think I would enjoy that thank you so much for inviting me <laughs> why don't we all go sure, and Iris yeah, you're bad for drink I give her a wink <laughs> <laughs> All right. One. <laughs> so we can, uh, yeah. Would we'll, you guys go to the go tavern, offer the to nicer Mariah one, to join us yeah. as well? Oh, yeah. You see, as you, you approach Mariah, you find her there, kind of 
probably sitting up on the gunnel, I imagine, kind of dangling your legs off the side, kind of listlessly kicking at the wind. And Indeed. Yeah. There are two empty bottles behind me, and I'm holding one that's half empty. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Mariah, um, mm. uh, Prion and Anaris were going to give me some tips on how to enjoy drinking over at the the bar. Well, Prion was. Anaris is just going to come along, I think. Um, would you like to join us? Serene's coming, too. I'm going to take notes. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> <laughs> oh... Why not? I'll swing over the gunnel and come on after them, little. All right. So, <laughs> a night of grog and merriment. Uh, depending on, do you go to a different tavern or do you do the familiar one, the snapping line, or do you go brave the empty net or any of the others? My question would be: Yes. Are there different? I don't know. The, my mic situation is making me very nervous. Um, are there different, like, specialty drinks? So we've had the claw wine. It, are there, like, different ones at different establishments? Because Saran would definitely, you know, she's making her tasting notes. She would want to know about the different drinks. So I would vote for somewhere different if they have different drinks. You haven't been to the empty net yet yourself. So you wouldn't know. Sarayan just kind of puts that out there. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine with me. I don't really care where we go. And they have other things besides the claw wine. Uh, Mariah, you would know that. Yes, uh, it's. Uh... Yeah. Yep. 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 So it sounds like we should go there then. Mariah seems to really like it. That's not what I said, but sure. <laughs> On your Either way there, um, as you approach this place, the sound of songs, the sound of shouting, maybe, maybe the sound of fists impacting on flesh and furniture being broken all sort of coalesce together in this maddening soundtrack of the empty net. And you reveal what, if you had thought pirate bar this basically defines it it is dirty um it smells terrible it is low lit and indeed um the empty net does not uh disappoint um the main drink at the empty net is just called taking a draw of the barrel, which they wheel an entire barrel of what they call the grog out. And you can just simply take a tankard, and as long as you put a um, put five copper pieces down, you can just dunk your tankard in this mixture of something alcoholic, basically. Um, they have nicer things as well, but that's pretty much the um, the the drink <laughs> of the place, How yes. Specialty. Um, as as we're getting close over there, I have a moment of um, clarity, um, and grab Prion's collar before we get too close in. Ah, moment of your time, my friend. Right. Um, you like things staying on the up and up. Of the law, you mean, yeah? Generally speaking, yeah. Hi, I do. Okay. I usually like to do the right thing. Why? Well, aside from the philosophical conversation involved in distinguishing the difference between good and lawful, um, my assumption is that you and Sarayan probably would not be too keen on members of our crew 
using our hold to smuggle things that we don't know about. Correct. Even if we got those ten crew for free. Ten crooks, you mean? I'm gonna not take offense at that. I'm trying, okay? You and I clearly don't see eye to eye on a lot of stuff, all right? And that's okay. I know what it's like when someone that I work with is not being forthright with me. And I don't want to do that to you. I appreciate the honesty. What's stopping these crooks or whatever they are from stabbing us in our sleeps? Loss of opportunity. In this business, it doesn't do you any favors to undercut the opportunities that you have to move goods. I guess it depends what we're smuggling, isn't it? And that's the problem, because it's one of those sort of no questions asked situations. So the only thing that I could be fairly certain of is that these were people, eh, sorry, been a lot through this bottle already. Um, these will be people who know what they're doing on a ship. Think like 10 of me, except not as nice. Let me guess, these 10 people, they're that prick prime waters. Oh, no. Actually. So who are these people from, then? Other members of, um... Free people! <laughs> I'll make it an agreement. As long as I don't step out of line, I won't kill them. That's fair. Um, DM, would their number, the, the crew that was offered to us by um, Silvergrin, would that bring us up to an appropriate number to crew the ship? It would. Um, so you've got five from the, and I, I may have been mistaken I'm about the full members. So you got, f was it f six, five or six experienced sailors? Yep. Five. You got seven dwarves, <laughs> and now <laughs> this is a potential ten. Yeah. So it'd be twenty-two plus three of us that are not officers. I think. At the moment, though, 25. you might need some officers. Um. Uh, you might need to do some officer swapping in case someone's yeah. not here. But yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that would help us a lot, especially since we're, you know, going out on the open water tomorrow. You still talking to Priyan, I take it. Uh, you're muted? Maybe? Maybe me? I couldn't hear you if you were oh, saying I was saying something. you're still talking to Priyan, I take it. Yeah. As I said, they do anything anything untowards this group. I'll put a trident in them. That sounds mighty fair to me. I'll make the arrangements. Clap them on I the back. I trust you, Mariah. Towards the tavern. And I trust hmm? you to put the group first. At this point, the group's safety is my safety. So, yeah. Good. 
Thank you for, for being honest with me. Aye, aye. Now let's try to get Melvin drunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you're welcome to try. Um, <laughs> the uh, For those of you who take a tankard and uh, take a pull of the grog, a pull of the barrel, it is um, weirdly, it's a little bit bitter, though it has this sort of limey quality to it as well. There are notes of sweetness then that follow towards the end and a unmistakable burn that kind of like hit hits your um <clears throat> throat and then when you cough against it you can sort of feel way up in your sinuses up in the nose it is already laid flat a number of um sailors on the ground you can see a couple other that run out the back towards that sort of um this deck that is extending over the water and just retch out into the river below um you know you can hear the 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 water sort of lapping below you you know that this is that this whole tavern is on stilts and kind of sits over top of the river that runs through salt marsh and prion you see uh especially you see a couple guys um sizing you up um there's one particular half orc sitting there with uh wearing sailor's pants and then just a vest that's just wide open doing nothing to conceal the you know muscular torso beneath and he is just sitting back in a chair just staring at you unblinking let's ignore him yeah. um bartender I'd, I'd like another one of these please and he holds up his empty tankard put down your damn coin and just grab another pull Oh, I didn't. Uh, sorry, I didn't know that that was how this worked. Puts down the small coins. Sarayan stumbles up behind him. How has this affected Sarayan? How many have you had? Just the one so far. Okay. Uh, you feel it. You're feeling a bit of a buzz, a bit of a dizziness. Um, starting to feel like you've got your sea legs on land, as it were. <laughs> Just a quick uh, one. Sorry, just a quick one. Massive thank you to Found Familiar for five gifted subs. Much appreciated. Oh my gosh, thank you. Um, a Kraken Hype Train can activate now. We have passed that hour. So if you guys want to donate and activate a Kraken Hype Train, we can give away gift cards to Kraken Dice store. So depending on how high the train gets is how much we can give away. So a massive thank you to everyone as well. So much appreciated. Massive thank yous. Yes, thank you. Uh... Serene, yes. Uh, it's any more, and you're you're feeling like you're gonna have to work a little extra hard to keep your feet beneath your shoulders. So Serene, not fully understanding how alcohol works. Either. Just like it's great, just like everyone, I guess. Yep. <laughs> but so she walks up and she's like, um, she puts down the tanker that had held the grog, and is like. Is, is there... <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I I feel a... Hmm. Hmm. Is there another... Uh, another... another? And she's leaning on the bar now. Like this. Is there another, another... Another drink? That is like a special drink? Like that drink? Or is that like the... The, the one... The one special drink? I... And she holds up her notebook points to where she believes her entry about this particular beverage is. Is it there? No one knows. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so she's just kind of like pointing and she's like hoping this explains it. I'm making, I, I'm not from here. I'm making notes to take back home. I, I think she's talking about the wine over at the other bar. The, like crab wine or whatever. No, I had, I had, just flipping through the pages. That shit will take that. you two gold deep before you feel a buzz. This shit will get you there and the silver. What's a so, buzz? Yeah. Is that a type of, of, of alcohol? Is she for real? Is this? 
She starts to look down at herself and begins yeah. having an existential <laughs> she's crisis. She's like this a lot. <laughs> Is she She's for usually real? a little bit more um, uh, good with words than this. I just want, I just want to learn. This is oh, it. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Why am I? She touches her face. Why am I crying? Hey, there's no crying in the in the net. Is Not unless what... you got more than three teeth knocked out. Is this what crying is? I've read about it, but I've never. I'm from under the water. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then she just goes and sits down. <laughs> So um, you said you said that I'm supposed to be feeling a buzz after a silver of this. How many you had, lad? The two so far. What two sips? No, two two of these, and I hold up the tankard. <laughs> Keep in mind, I'm eleven, uh, four foot eleven. <laughs> Barman. Yeah, he's kind of looking down at you, and he just runs his hand through his his greasy hair and just. Barman. I bet you 50 gold that you can't get him drunk. <sighs> okay. I've never really drank much before. I had some ale last night, but that that's all the alcohol I've ever had, to be honest. What, is this some kind of trick? No trick. We can't seem to get him pissed. You can give it a good go if you want. If you get him drunk, I'll give you 50 gold. Uh, Prion, make a persuasion check. I will use my Kraken hype train dice because there is a hype train going, guys. Woo! If oh we get to gosh. level two, if we get to level two, it'll be a ten dollar gift card to the Kraken dice store. If we get to a oh level three, it'll be a twenty dollar. If we get to a level four or five, it's a thirty dollar gift card. So, so much dice. Persuasion, yeah. Oh, yes. Six, oh, six or an ice six. Um, five. <laughs> he uh, shakes his head for a bit and then and gives you an icy glare and says, mm, robes and books. And you've got some tricks up your sleeve. 50 gold. You trying to rob me, big guy? No, I'm just being honest. Uh, he is being honest. We can't get him drunk. Borderline. Real borderline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's honest. We can't get him yeah. drunk. I mean, it is true that I've never been drunk before. Um, and it is true that I have some magic, but I don't know how to, like, make someone sober. Or anything like that. Well, I've seen sailors with all sorts of missing legs and limbs, teeth, eyes, noses, of all sorts of awful afflictions you can only imagine. And this by far is the worst I've ever encountered, if that be the truth. Volker, bless you, son. Thanks. May your death come soon that ye not experience this misery much longer. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Ryan, hearing the loud laughter, starts laughing. Just by yourself over the <laughs> table. <laughs> Laugh crying. She is she doing that thing where it's like she doesn't hear the joke, but she goes, <laughs> "Yeah, what exactly. was that?" Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly what she's doing. <laughs> Ha ha ha, what's funny, guys? Um, <laughs> so, okay. I think with the, with the evening there, um, the rough crowd, uh, unless Prion gives in to fighting someone who is trying to pick a fight with him, we will leave uh, the crew there and then get ready for you guys to go underway in the morning. So while we do that, uh, did you say something, Jade? Sorry? No, I was just trying to bully me into a fight, is he? Uh, yes, there are maybe one or two guys who definitely sizing you up would like to get into a fist fight. So, but oh, come being on. the calm you gentleman you are, you avoid them. It sounds like so. 
Yeah. Um, All right. That's fine. That's perfectly respectable. And uh, with that, do you know uh, what 100 bits means? It means I have to lift this thing up. (laughs) You're welcome. Just brawl him with that. It'll be over in one. Uh, With that, then we will uh, go to our break. Thank you. And and we resume our story. Um, One or two things I think some of the party wanted to accomplish at the empty net before leaving that we kind of remembered as soon as we went dark. So, um, as the evening is closing (laughs) down in this run down dingy tavern um it's tough to tell when this place is dying down actually because you think surely it must be the middle of the night and a few more come in and a few of the guys just laying on the ground pull themselves up to the bar and dump their tankards back into the um into the pot of grog and keep going it is a uh, fearful sight to be sure um I'd like to go over to Mariah. Uh, Mariah? Yeah, uh, what's up? Don't you think we should probably try to, like, hire some more crew if we're going out tomorrow? Maybe oh, we could um, find some people here that would be willing to join us. I've uh, got some, some, some irons in the fire where that's concerned. Had a little chat see with Prion about it. He's all coolio. Okay, um, well... I just wanted to let you know that I've taken some notes on um, the tendencies of these types of people, um, and it seems like they checks notes. Um, they they seem to respect people who can drink a lot, and um, they really are fond of competition. Generally, maybe we can use that to our advantage to to hire some more crew or something. I assume you don't mean to get into a fist fight with anyone. I'm not very strong. No, you're not. Just be, just be straight with me. What are you proposing? Well, I think... I mean, I haven't really been affected by any of the alcohol I've drank, so maybe if, if I... Well, if we were to propose a competition, I think I could probably win it. Hmm. Yeah, why not? Let's give it a shot. Sounds but I don't, I don't really know how that works. So I'm hoping that you know how to get one of those started. And maybe set the terms so that we can actually get some crew out of it or something. Hmm. I, I'm going to find, <laughs> I don't know if this is even um, a thing in this bar, but what looks to be the drunkest area of the room, <laughs> um, I'll take a tankard. Accepting Sarayan's corner of the room <laughs> where she's laugh crying. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to leave little Coral, <laughs> I'll leave little Coral alone. Um, <laughs> And I'm basically going to stride into the middle of the room. I'm dragging Melvin behind me. <laughs> I'm just going to say. Yeah, I was going to say, if you want to get to the epicenter of drunkness, the middle of the tavern is it. Hot oh. shit. Okay. Um, I could drag Melvin over. And then um, when we get over there, I, I kick a stool over towards me. Stand up on on top of it. I said, all right. You dogs, I know all of you can hold your goddamn liquor, but you think you can hold up against this chump? He's a member of my crew. In fact, he's one of them leaders. I bet. Oh, I bet it would be real something to see if you could class up to this kiddo. In fact... If one of you actually outclasses him, I will just straight up buy the rest of your drinks for the night. Make a performance check. (laughs) From the corner of the room, Serene goes, Woo! (laughs) Um, I'm going to utilize my floating D6. 
All right. And to Sarayan's dismay, there are no woo girls at the empty nets, unfortunately. <laughs> She's the only one. Woo! <laughs> uh, 16. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you get the attention of quite a few of them who come over. Uh, some of them are saying, um, you see them start to now form like a little semicircle around Melvin. They're kind of pointing at him and laughing and making jokes. Uh, uh, many remarks about the size of his arms and legs and his t general stature and that posture. <laughs> um, Bye. And, he looks confident. Uh, a couple of them say, right, 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 all right. So if I beat him, what's in it for me? Be paying for all your drinks. Ha! Whoa, hot shit. Well, this is the cheapest damn tavern, but freeze free. And you, if he you and... could go to a different tavern if you want, we'll still pay your drinks. Fuck that noise. Let's drink here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Woo! if he manages to drink you under the table, I will see you bright and early over at my ship. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got the wrong impression. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Freya correct him. Gonna... <laughs> correct him. I was like, when shit? Is that a euphemism? <laughs> to work aboard the ship. An actual ship. And actual work. And actual work. You can see I his. Don't know <laughs> you can see his brain go from Ouga to. Kinky to ah oh, fuck and just like a a cascade of confusion um and he <laughs> and so he go wait so if I lose to this little twig I gotta work for you I'm pay you you're making money out of this deal one way or the other oh. Um, what are you paying? Ten and ten. Ha! Huh. All right. Bring it. <laughs> right. Little mouse. Give Melvin a massive clap on the back. He almost falls over. Do be proud, kiddo. Does he need I'll to try? Ride? Um, Melvin, so he will be looking you straight in the eyes, and before he gets absolutely, um, otherworldly in his perception of what's going on, uh, please make a, uh, a deception or performance check, it's up to you, um, they'll be the same. If you simply, you have a feeling that the way he's staring at you, he gets a little confused as you sort of chug down the first um, bit of grog that you are not even remotely affected. Um, do you, so, so I guess this is my question. Do you try to fake it at all or do you just sit there resolute? I don't try to fake it at all. Okay, all right. Melvin doesn't understand that he should be feeling any effects, so he wouldn't try to fake anything. <clears throat> so after you guys get through about the first one, this guy goes, Hey, wait a second, uh, did we, what's going on here? I, I don't know, I started drinking yesterday and, well, it doesn't taste terrible, but I don't get what all the fuss is about. He's got Ugh. good jeans! <laughs> good jeans, woo! He kind of looks under the table looking for your jeans and then <laughs> falls over and uh, kind of boom, thumps his head on the ground of the tavern. Does, does that mean I win? I go over and grab his head. Melvin! <laughs> and there are a couple, now there are a, a number of uh, gruff, dirty, meaty hands that kind of clap you on the back and grab you by the shoulder and, and shake you a little bit in congratulations as there's now kind of a chorus of cheers around you. Melvin! 
Yeah. Take, take 10. Elvin! <laughs> the twig with an iron liver. A quick thank you to Len036. Is it Len? Was it Iron? 037 has donated $3. Inspiration for Mariah. Sadly, we don't pick favorites here, but we will roll a random <laughs> dice. But thank I you very much for your $3. <laughs> yes. And. Fuck it, the DM won it. Damn. <laughs> Haven't you already got a G6? To use it. <laughs> but uh -uh. thank you very much for your donation. That's a D6 inspiration that has to be used tonight. Indeed. All right. So you've got uh, that deal in the, in there. Do you... So, so is your plan to continue this? Until it seems like a bad idea to continue, I guess. Which... Melvin probably wouldn't even be perceptive enough to know. Okay. So. I'll, um, I'll keep an eye. <laughs> yeah. Make an insight check there, Moriah. Can I also do the same? Uh, sure. Okay. If you communicate to him that you're about yeah. to do that, you can mm -hmm. both make an insight check. Okay. I have a 14. I've got a plus five. I rolled a 10. So it's 15. Okay, between the both of you, you get a sense after getting about three more of these pretty gruff okay. crew members that it's about time to lay off. They sense okay. that something's up. Sounds There's good. There's kind of people whispering in the corners of the bar and pointing your way, and it looks a little bit less amused and a little bit more suspicious. Great. Um, and then before we fully close out, I'll head up to the bar and with a little look over to Nene and then to Prion, um, I will say um, rather loudly, my order up a barrel of grog for my next journey, which is tomorrow morning. So uh, let's get that real quick. Right away. Okay. And they, uh, um, they, we'll get it there before you embark. Much obliged. All right, lads and ladies, let's pack it in for the night. <laughs> Did Anaris oh, even leaving? touch any? Huh? Did Anaris even touch any grog? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's not going to happen. <laughs> Did she drink any, Anaris? Any of the grog? Like, that much. Torayan <laughs> has extracted herself from the corner of the bar where she was hiding hmm. and is like walked up to the nearest recognizable member of her party and is like I heard I heard I'm hope I'm praying it's Mariah that she walks up to <laughs> I heard M Mariah say that we have a trip in the morning is it the morning it's um, almost the morning um, how many did you have Saran sadly <laughs> Sarayan is a lightweight and she had the one but then she had whatever else was like offered that was the specialty of the house <clears throat> gotcha um well the the sort of grog barrel is the specialty of the house right so she had another is... one of those <laughs> okay make a constitution saving oh throw. god you know, a real discerning um, barkeep would have known to say, oh, and this is a specialty of the region. And oh, this other thing is also a specialty of the region. And this is a specialty of the house down the road and just go through all of the alcohol. He was doing everything he could to get Saran away from him at that moment because she, she was mad freaking him out. So... <laughs> Thinking that like a good barkeep would be like, oh, this is another specialty of the region, and then just give her water. <laughs> She's probably too drunk at that point, and it's like, whoa, this tastes familiar. <laughs> but she won't get any more drunk. Okay, I rolled a seventeen. Whew. You're all right. You're, On my uh, crack and dice. Yeah. So you uh, guys are all able to. Uh, yeah. What? No, no. I was, I was just gonna say. Yeah. That's. Let's, let's head on back. I'm going to take her by the shoulders and gently lead her out of the bar. <laughs> you oh, are able to... So pretty. <laughs> mm. I have a feeling I'm never going to hear you say that again. <laughs> I like your hair. <laughs> it, starts... it is one of my better features. Pat 
nodding at her paws. <laughs> it's very <laughs> thick. <laughs> at least I, I don't have stuck. to carry you. And I look to Inaris. It probably has got no idea that Prion carried her home last night. You may have carried me, but you enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> ah, sassy. <laughs> <laughs> um, DM, at some point, can I get a, a accounting of how many tankards of grog Melvin drank that night? Doesn't have to be right now. Okay, it, I mean, it's probably about five, five or six. So okay, um, it's strong stuff. It's based in very strong alcohol. <laughs> Do we have to, to stop every boat. five minutes for like Melvin to go toilet? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. No, uh, Melvin, yeah, no. Just... Don't break the seal. Don't break the seal. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, sure. So you guys uh, head out for there. You spend the evening, and then in the morning, you find a groggy crew readying your ship along with 10 other members that you do not recognize who are um, all about the ship it's an interesting thing because it seems like for the most part everyone knows what they're doing um, there's a slight lack of order though as there are no leadership roles really assigned at the moment but um, that is what happens when the morning comes. You mean leadership roles like within us or does the crew need leadership the roles? The crew and well, there aren't in, you know, there was no bosun around, there is no, so there's slight oh, arguments okay, about okay. how to hoist this, where to where to stow that, blah, 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 so. Well, we'll fix that here in a hot second as soon as we get there. Yeah. So, in, so yeah, the morning comes and that is it is time for departure. Um, and we we got four new crew members from those drinking contests. Is that yes. correct? Yes, I thought. Three. I thought it was three in addition to the first one. Oh, yes, that's what I meant. Um, oh, so four, so four new total. Amazing. Get that away from the ship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no more sharks. Ah. Yeah, no. So I'm like, no. That is the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> what is? Sorry. The I'm big sure. shark token. <laughs> the shark token. Wait. It's cute. Oh, I put. I put. No. I didn't see that that was there. That's just supposed to be some nice ship art for you guys to get on your way at. So no. you do. <clears throat> Along with these new crew members, someone presents you with a. Um, set of maps and a couple coordinates marked on them that say this is kind of the general heading of this ship that we saw and this is the direction all righty um do you all mind if i keep the hat and the associated duties that come with it i'm by me i don't want to do anything Orion is too hungover to even function Oh, you sweet summer child. You have a feeling um, you got a little message from a sprite that Nether has come aboard, but she's still Keep below. Keeping to herself. Keep into herself. Yeah. Same with Talise. Uh, you are, your crew is without a first mate for the very moment. You know what? Saran. Um, how about a... Uh, how about you uh, exercise those uh, vocal folds of yours this morning? I'm gonna shout some commands across the deck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I. Captain. You you can be uncertain with me, but you've got to convey absolute authority to them. Absolute authority. Absolute authority. God, is it really bright out here? Does anyone? What do you? What do I say? I'm sorry. What do when I say? when we head out, as <clears throat> I'm giving commands and um, instructions for the movement of the ship, you will repeat those out to the crew. Yeah. She's ready. Make sure they're followed. 
what do I do if they don't follow? Get up in their face and intimidate the fuck out of them. Or kill them. Oh! Well, no, because we actually need them. But... Okay. After the first one or two, the rest of them will fall in line. See, that's not the way that we typically run things on a ship. We, we like to have the same number of people on the ship that left harbor as comes back. Saran starts counting very obviously. <laughs> but having to, like, stop and start over again. Prisoners are an option. <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> um, anyway, that's the gist of it. I, I, cool. Captain. 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 And Prion Ice, are you taking the bosun role again? Yeah, he's learning carpentry. Yeah, so as uh, there's no actual carpentry to be done, but you can kind of take that role, starting to organize the little crews. You start to say, "No, you five, throw that. You, you all hoist this. You're kind of, you can kind of take control right now of the mechanical aspect of the ship, especially with your proficient. No role involved. Just getting that all that stuff just sorted out." and you embark out into the waters. Um, <clears throat> there are a few things um, you guys can do with downtime. You think it's probably gonna be about a day of travel, um, but based on the fact that the crew is very hungover, it has a quality of two. Um, there are some things that you can, you all can do. So uh, I'm going to <clears throat> post these for you guys in our little Discord, but then I'm gonna read to chat kind of and to all of you some of these things that you can do. Um, you can draw, if you spend your time not doing anything else, but sort of drawing a map and keeping naval logs you can make it easier for you to find your way back out, but you actually have to spend all of your time doing this. Um, you can go fishing. You can forage for food by fishing off the side of the boat. The first mate being the person who keeps the morale and the order of the ship, the emotional order of the ship is the first mate's responsibility. So, um, once every 24 hours, if it's a lower crew morale, you can make a persuasion check and try to raise the quality of your crew. Uh, the quartermaster can navigate, trying to prevent the ship from becoming lost. You can obviously keep watch and um, uh, uh, just, uh, you know, help the crew determine where there are threats. The bosun can repair, um, spend the whole day trying to repair and patch up the ship. Um, slow, but effective. And the captain can potentially, if there are um, elements that would be conducive to stealth, can help to hide at the ship from other things. So those are just a couple things. Just wanted to point out to you some other activities you can do while on the ship. But for now, you have about 24 hours. Um, is there anything anyone would like to do on um, the first 24 hours or so of your travel? I, I will I try will. to repair the boat. Okay. okay. I'll make May it probably. May will keep look out for threats when she's on deck. Okay. Well, Melvin will offer up his services as as quartermaster while Talise yeah. is staying below. I was definitely thinking about that. All right. Um, so Melvin, you can track and c keep mapping, um, unless you're navigating. Um, unless you're serving as the navigator, that's a bit different. It's one thing is tracking your progress; the other is trying to get to a certain place. Right. It says um, for drawing a map. The ship's captain normally does that. Normally, but it's not um, a captain only. Sorry, um, I was I was thinking check. navigate. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, so make a survival check, please. Mm -hmm. um, Prion. I rolled a kraken on my kraken die. Nice. Oh, uh, 
the weather is easy this time. Um, everything lines up. The stars are clear at night. Plotting this course has never been easier. It's just, just it's textbook, really. It's a 24 so, for yeah. clarity. I've rolled a natural uh, 20. You said a uh, enormously efficient course. Prion, please roll a strength check. A strength check? I wrote a natural one. Oh, oh dear. Um, unfortunately, the crew is to work. You feel like you make some progress, but some of the repairs you make sort of come undone, aren't aren't quite up to par. Uh, I look at the, the hammer and realize I've brought a rubber hammer and glass nails. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever invented those glass nails, I don't know. Um, left-handed screwdrivers so during the night there's a moment it's you think it's about it'll be a bit after the morning when you encounter this ship or at least where you get to the territory where it was last seen is anyone staying up for the night to do watch or are you just allowing the crew to do that or what is the the pattern of watch we can take watches as normal correct uh-huh okay um let's see Pre -on will the crew also has a passive perception of 10 plus okay. its quality and um, based on the hungover and quality of the crew today it's two so it has a passive yeah. perception of 12. i'll stay up for one watch i'll stay up for one as well i've got a passive yeah, of 14. Yeah. I have a mm. passive of 15. And mine I have a is 16. <laughs> Serene's gonna go to sleep. Yeah. So I guess we'll each take a shift. Then, me, Prion, and Nene. Okay. Um, as you three are up then in the night, um, one of the uh, crewmen is climbing up the mast to get to the crow's nest for their watch with a lantern and you see it suddenly this this glowing light fall down it looks uh and then um it's almost entrancing because it just looks like it's purely dark and then it suddenly bursts into a bit of light as it hits and then it actually in a stroke of terrible luck collides with two other watch lanterns that were strung on the mast and suddenly with these three bursts of fire the night is alight as one of the sails catches as does a coil of rope near the side of the ship there is a fire aboard the ship one of the most dangerous things that can possibly happen Despite there being water everywhere, the components of the ship itself are actually quite flammable. And we will move into a crew check for all of you guys. Um, this is a moderately sized fire based on what I secretly rolled here. Um, Mariah, you know that it will take you assessing this, your first mate to um, uh, help uh, talk to the crew. It will take the bosun, and it will take someone to help patch up the wounded as you continue to take care. So we will need for the first time a ship's surgeon to make a check. Um. Well, let's uh, yell for all of our party members. Um, get Sarayan up here in the uh, first mate capacity and Nene uh with her potential for taking care of people since i don't think we can rely on a not present to lease <laughs> um, so um we'll deputize her if she is willing all right yeah, i won't let him die or be bacon so in air uh sorry uh, serene you are called up from your sleep um you are told it is time to set this crew to motion mariah looking at the fire, how it's spreading, the different components of the ship. Um, furling or unfurling the wrong sail could lead a coil of burning rope to the wrong place. Mm -hmm. It's a delicate balance. It's a 
strange complex knot to unweave to be able to take care of this. I need you to make a intelligence-based water vehicles check. Okay. Um, I have a floating d20 inspiration, so I'm gonna okay. use that. Go ahead. My character sheet. Avantage. 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 Um, very good, because one of those is a natural one. <laughs> you guys are just but dodging those natural one. ones tonight. Okay, so an int-based water vehicles check. That will be a total of 16. Okay, you succeed and are able to identify what needs to be done. And can you uh, yell out a couple of orders very quickly? Would you serai in here? And some of the crew hears it, but they are hard at work. Um, it is your job to drum the crew into action, really, to um, make sure that they uh, fear for their lives should they not do exactly what Mariah says and exactly what you are repeating to them. Sarayan, I need you to make a intimidation check. Ah, uh, yes. Incredibly intimidating, Thrayan. You are charismatic. I mean, that is true. That is true. Okay. I rolled a 13. <clears throat> Anything added to the 13? Uh, can I roll my d6 inspiration? Mm -hmm. Yay! And I will do that as <laughs> well. Ooh, plus four, nice. so 17. 17 will do it. Um, the first time you uh, tell a sailor to grab a line that seems to be the end of it is burning. It's only mere moments before the fire will come up and actually burn his hands, but you tell him he has to haul that back. We'll patch you up later. Do you want the whole, do you want this whole thing to go up? Um, you know, would you rather, you know, would you rather hurt your hand or roast alive? It's strange words coming out of your mouth. He looks fearful, but then you say, you get back into his face and you say, all of our lives depend on this. Mariah's orders, haul that line, sailor. And he gets a resolved look in his eyes and hauls hand over hand this burning set of rope. Um, you go and repeat this sort of action around the ship, drumming them all into action and feel very successful about your imposing your the commands of your captain upon the rest of the crew. All right, Prion, there are some <clears throat> um, uh, wild lines coming about, a couple of things that need to be hoisted out of the way, a particular um, set of crates and then an entire yard with a furled sail needs to be completely lifted out of the way so that this furled sail doesn't catch and become just an enormous piece of fuel for the fire raging. Um, I need you to make a strength check. I was going to suggest something else. Can you not reach out to the sea and just command the sea to to, to like so he grabs like what appears to be nothing and just throws it up towards the sail? and cast shape water Maybe. you could do that <clears throat> but it, and it could help but the bosun's job in a fire is to help with this so it, it, that would mean that the bosun isn't commanding the crew oh, okay um yeah. in his role does that make sense yeah okay yeah so what was it again sorry a strength check. Um, it would be Carpenter's Tools strength, but... Um... Carpenter's Tools. Well, I do have Carpenter's Tools, but just strength. 11. Oh, you, are you proficient in Carpenter's Tools? No, no you're no. not. Right, yeah. No, but I do have the tools. Only 11. Okay, 11 is not quite enough. Um, you're able to get it mostly out of the way, but... Um, it does catch fire, the one yard. Only about half of it, but still, you're, you need to expend some extra effort to then put out this fire. Um, so we have two successes. Unfortunately, that is a failure. The last bit, um, a, quite a few sailors are now coming away with burnt hands, with eyes choked with flame, um, coughing. This is... 
magical healing could do it, but we're talking treating a dozen sailors, almost two dozen, immediately. These are quick remedies that can't just... You, you would not have the spell slots to simply heal, 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 heal everyone. This is quick medicine. This is treatment to get them through this particularly hard task. We need a surgeon to help patch the crew up. Sounds like that's Hey, Yeah, I got a, uh, I got a plus two in medicine. Okay. Am I tools? Or just roll a medicine check. A uh, medicine check, indeed. Does it help to have a healer's kit at all, or is that a yeah, point here? Yeah, I was uh, uh, not in this particular case. Okay. Um, you could totally use fair. the healer's kit for it as well, but it's the it's the skill check using it. Yeah, takes total sense. Do you have any bonus dice, Nene? And then I'm gonna use my uh, inspiration to that because that's no bueno. Really? Oh, that's nine. With inspiration? Yes, I rolled a one. Nine is a failure. Is there anything in particular that Melvin is doing during all of this? Um, well, first reaction is a little bit of panic. Um, but second reaction is actually to uh, try a little bit of magic to try to help put out these flames. Um, he'll take his book, he'll open it up above his head, and he'll clap it shut, casting uh, Thunder Wave using um, cold damage to try to put out the fire in the sails above him. That okay. would be a 15-foot um, cube with All the right. face that he's casting it as the square above him, technically. Cool. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, what level spell is that? Your... It is a first level spell. Um, okay. Just as an initial test to see if that's going to do enough. Um, it seems it seems effective. Um, and with that investment, the crew check will increase by one. And now, who would like to roll for the crew? As we have an interesting teetering moment, we are on the uh, Brink, we have two have question, failures yeah. and two successes. Yeah. Um, is it possible to inspire the crew? <clears throat> you have been using... So, as the captain, you use basically okay. your entire effort to be... Totally fair. Totally captaining. Fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Who wants to roll, y'all? <laughs> I'll do it. I get oh, to redeem myself. Yeah, if Anaris <clears throat> wants to do it, I... The DM gifts his inspiration as this is the NPC crew. Oh. All right, roll two. All right, so roll two d20s. Yep. That's right. Okay. Oh, God, come on, please, 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 please. Ooh, 23. Uh, actually, well, you rolled two of them. So there's Damn a 14 it. and a nine. Oh, oh, oh. The 14 plus two plus one is 17. Yes. So your crew is slow, your crew is sluggish, but with all of you combined, putting in your effort with the spell cast, puts out a good portion of the fire. Um, with Sarayan's commands, Inaris, you are uh, quickly pulling out your healer's kit and you're ready as they come to you. You're able to put salves on their hands and quick wrap them up so they can get right back to it and haul despite the burn blisters on their hands, able to soothe the burning lungs. Um, all of this under Mariah's um, guidance and Prion's effort, brute effort with the rest of the bosun's mates hauling. Not all of you made the check, but all of you together with the crew are able to succeed in extinguishing the fire. Yay! Good job, guys. <laughs> and because of that, um, let's see, because it was not a total success. We lose some hit points on the ship. Yes. Don't worry, I'm great at fixing ships. Please roll a uh, D3, someone. 
Okay. Last nails. I mean, that's just a very particular touch that you bring, I think. <laughs> Who's, who's rolling um, the knee? I put it in. Okay. Three. Oof. You should have let me. I probably would have rolled a one <laughs> on my low rolls tonight. <laughs> the hull takes 18 points of damage. Um, Your ballista takes 23. Okay. The sails take 19 and the helm takes 22 points of fire damage, unfortunately. That D3 was unlucky. That's as many components as possible taking okay. damage. Um. Okay, so the only thing that's not clear to me on the Pixie's Fury is um, how to change those all specific elements. Because I thought you said not to mess with the character sheet. So you can... Not the character sheet. Yeah. But... I put a spot in the notes for it. There's just so, hull and sails? Yeah, so that you can add. That's not the character sheet, that's the notes. I, I just okay. meant, like, on the character sheet, it has, like, yeah. a strength score and the con score and, like, right. the ballista and everything. Just that part is what I meant with don't alter. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, All of so... the notes and stuff on there is totally yours to use. So. Okay, so, so... we should just the... add a line for... The, the damage was yep. um, minus eighteen to which one? The the hull. Hull. Okay. Twenty three to the sails. Okay. Nineteen to your ballista. And twenty two to the helm. Got it. Thank you. Mm hmm. And with that, there is a bit of calm. You are able to set the crew back to their normal watches and reach a calm morning. And it is not long after that a lookout calls out a ship barely limping above the water in the distance. You can all see that its sails are ragged flapping to the wind and that the hull itself is riding low about maybe 10 feet deeper in the water than you would expect you must imagine that the um, actual hold and such the lower levels of the ship are probably submersed and within a day or two it will submit to the waves wow oh. We'll need to get close then. Um, I My assumption, DM, is that it would be best to head over via jelly boat, perhaps? Or can we actually approach with the Fury? You could, but um, getting two ships that close to one another, especially when you don't know what's aboard, is probably not the best idea. Okay, then, then we should take the jelly boat, y'all. You all. <laughs> the Jolly Ollie. Indeed. Placing a member of the crew in charge, I assume. And yeah. they will um, prepare. One of the um one of the veteran sailors. Okay. Uh someone will gladly oh, dragon. Uh, they will take the helm no, and not not dragon. Not, not Dargan? <laughs> not no. Dragon? Dragon Dargan? No, specifically one of the um the veteran sailors from the first bar. Hmm. Okay. Good choice. Uh, he will, uh, they will take the helm uh, gladly and um, start ordering sails furled to hold their position until the captain and the uh, away crew returns. Now, everyone loads up in the jolly boat and starts to head over to the Emperor of the Waves. I'll have a look underneath. And I will just lean backwards off the side and swim underneath. Oh, okay. And have a look <clears throat> down below what might have caught it or... Okay, uh, make a perception check. A perception, you say? 
Oh, for God's sake, my dice are terrible tonight. Seven. Um, it's murky here. Um, whatever currents, whatever the currents are carrying, you can't see, you can hardly see 30 feet below you. And so investigating this hull is, is tough to do, but you don't see any obvious breaches. Um, there's the fact that actually one of the masts is, despite the, the picture that I've shown, is actually completely shorn off. So that, uh, the, which, there's a, a number of other damaged points to this ship that uh, um, it looks like it, it suffered per perhaps some sort of attack at one point, but no obvious breaches in the hull. Um, the hull seems intact. How okay. close are we to the ship? Uh, by this point, you are rowing out. You're probably getting within... Um, 60 feet? Uh, probably, I was going to say 100, but if you keep rowing, 60 feet will be very soon. Uh, oh. When we get out 60 feet, um, Nay is going to eye the ship suspiciously and activate Eyes of the Grave. Okay. Uh, could you post and read out what I exactly that does? Can. Uh, eyes of the grave as an action you know the location of any undead within 60 feet of you that isn't behind total cover and that isn't protected from divination magic until the end of your next turn okay um so you reach out feeling the raven queen's energy guiding your senses then your feel for this area and you do not immediately sense any undead the, um, but you know that if there were undead inside the ship, you would not be able to sense it as they would be receiving that total cover. But on the outside of the ship, top deck, everything, no undead that you can perceive um, with the help of the Raven Queen. Uh -huh. I would be attempting to ritual cast detect magic the moment I get in the boat, the jolly boat, um, hoping to finish it before we arrive at the ship. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. But 10 minute cast so it, it may not it probably takes you there. about that time to row out there based on where you so yeah okay. that's fine anything else anyone wants to do on the journey out oh, I swim I... ahead so I'm right ahead and swimming underneath keep coming up every now and again for air and then diving deep back down just to again trying to let the murkiness settle okay I'd let Mariah know. As far as I can tell, there's no one dead. At least on top. I don't know about down below. Right. Well, that's one manner of threat that we might encounter out here. Luckily, my queen hates them. Don't we all? <laughs> you eventually pull your jolly boat up to the side of the Emperor of the Waves. Melvin, your detect magic has completed. If you would all place yourselves over in this area to the very far right, I would be most grateful. If I may, um, Melvin's detect magic actually involves him taking very thin strips of paper and actually wrapping them around his eyeglasses. Um, and you can see that this, these papers essentially see through um, yeah but he's applying them fastidiously to his eyeglasses and he puts his glasses back on when he is done cool hmm. very cool let's ascend you can maybe throw a rope up or something and climb up DM how high um, up is because it? because of the main the way that the ship is kind of sunk, it's only about ten feet up, and it's not a difficult climb. Uh, okay, cool. But again, the ship is laying much lower in the water than one normally should, and so you climb up here, and um, the decks you can tell now are gently sloping to the left or to the port 
Um, the forecastle and quarterdeck are empty, and short wooden stumps are all that remain of the masts. There are double doors leading to the cabins, both in the fore and the aft, and the metal grate, there is a metal grate in the deck that offers access to lower decks. Um, Aside from the rhythmic creak of the ship's badly weathered timbers, all seems quiet. Uh, point of clarification, DM. Um, the masts, all three of them are gone? Yes. Um, what's the nature of the plate of the wood that's left? Um, does it look like it was a clean cut, or does it look like it was sort of ripped off um, like perhaps in, in a very furious storm? Um, yeah, make an investigation check. Okay. Uh, 20. 20. Uh, by the, you see even some splinters down on the deck and by the jagged nature of the break of the mast, these were probably wrenched free, like broken. Okay. Um, but like in, in a- Snapped like twigs. Yeah. Okay. So likely a storm, unless something- Unless something just broke them off, but yeah. Real strong and real big. <laughs> Authentically, like. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Well. Like a kraken. <laughs> <laughs> um, our employer said that his lockbox is probably in the hold. Um, which is going to be down, and that's probably going to be partially, if not entirely, submerged. So. Um, my personal recommendation is that those of you who are comfy in the water, take point. I was going to say I'll go first. I'll follow. Serain is feeling much more herself so, now. Uh, so there are doors up here to what's under the forecastle, and then what you is usually the captain's cabins or the officer's quarters. There are doors back here as well. Maybe we should check the captain's yeah, there first. might be something that would better inform us here. That door's going to be right here, you said? Yes. Okay. I'm not exactly so sure, sure why it's not visible. but um, Pull out my Actually, so we've got the... This actually makes more sense. Uh, if you come over to the side here, if you okay. look to your left, the more visible main level. Gotcha. So, um, this door is is solid, but seems to be unlocked. Okay. Um, there is just a normal door, looking a bit battered. Um, it takes a bit of extra effort. Prion, are you opening it? I raise my shield and then push it open with my shield. Okay. You push it open and see an immense amount of wreckage here um and there is a sort of rough carved stone altar in the back strange markings cover the surface dried cakes of mud are littering the floor around it and there's a humanoid ring of skulls on the wall above it each mounted on a wooden spike the corners of this room are piled with garbage and debris smashed furniture, torn sacks, small piles of dried palm fronds. And the staircase descends over here. On top of the altar is a simple black stone monolith that is almost something interesting about it. It just, you like looking at it. There's something that just makes you want to look closer or just stare at it a little while longer and wearing ragged sailor's clothes kneeling in front of the altar are three humanoids just sitting there kind of rocking back and forth their heads are tilted down so you can't really see their faces but they all look bald 
strange sort of pinkish hue about their flesh as they all just simply sit there and rock back and forth. Do I detect any magic? Coming from the altar, yes. Well, I suppose this is what they hired us for. I will move in and hit the first one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, we will roll some initiative at that declaration of action. <laughs> roll you know in and what? hit them. I like that. I like it too. <laughs> oh, God. Rion, as you move in, you see that one of them wheels its head around and. What, uh, protruding from the mouth is this long, worm-like tongue that just kind of uh, wheels around randomly. And actually out from, kind of protruding from the shoulders are two much longer tentacles as well. Um, you are looking at a creature that looks something like this, which I am just nope. about to show you. Nope, nope. <laughs> I've nope. seen the strength. No, I thank you. that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, um, it's just an everyday creature, right, guys? Nope, on out of here. Oh, he's cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, should I should I not move yet? So, not yet. On your turn, um, as you oh. draw your blade and get ready to go, um, that is what we will call. Gross. Oh, and they go first. <laughs> Interesting. Ah. Um, are we all on initiative? There's not many of you. There's not many of us. There are less of us here tonight. I miss you all, but initiative is <laughs> quicker. Um, so as they, they get up and turn around and all of these um, different, uh, these tentacles start to just uh, sort of waft around their bodies and they look at all of you. Prion, you have opened the door, so this first one turns and makes an attack towards you. Um, I am rolling publicly by accident. I have a <sighs> nine to hit on the first one. Misses. They're attacking and from their spot? They are. These tentacles are reaching out from where they are, trying to wrap around Prion. Uh, I have another one for a 14, which doesn't work. Another one does two more attacks towards you. I have a, a twenty. Hit. I have a twenty-six critical hit. Yeah, that will hit. Fourteen points of damage, and you feel these tentacles wrapping around you. You are grappled, and um, yeah. Uh, actually, that first one. So he hit you with that first, so that 16. Instead of making the attack, he is going to um, use his vitality drain feature on you. And it feels like as these tentacles wrap tighter around you, part of the very end of the tentacle fe finds just a gap in your armor and starts to sort of go down and caress against your flesh, feeling slimy and cold and tries <laughs> to pull the life out of you. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Plus five, it's not too bad. <laughs> ah, 11. Oh no. Oh no. It does not manage to pull any life out of you. I had a plus five. <laughs> so this one moves forward and looks to you, Melvin, and first of all uses its um, uh, tentacle uh, coming in at a 12 which will just whoosh, go over your head and then it will send its second sort of shoulder protrusion at you to try and wrap you up and attacks with 13. So, great. That's my AC. Oh! Is it going to shield that? Shield it. Yeah, I'll cast shield. I'll, I'll summon a giant book in between me and the... <laughs> <laughs> Interposing book. Indeed. Uh... Often, how I like to use books in public as shields. 
So you see now Prion is wrapped tight by these tentacles and it's got this sort of Jabba the Hutt tongue Um, kind of thing going on, um, trying to cause more damage to him. And Inaris, it is your turn. Awesome. Inaris is going to take one look at these things and she is going to cast Bane on all three of them. Oh, I think you need to move. Yeah, you need to be able to see them, so you need to move around to maybe at least here. Okay. I said 30 feet. So make sure I have the door so you can see. Not too close because I don't want to die. No. And then. Cast. Did it do its thing? Did it pop up? Yes, uh, so DC 12 charisma saving throw, I believe. Yes? All there right. Goes. I have two baned creatures here. The oh, I'm going left to right there. Anything else from Inaris? Any bonus actions or anything like that? Bonus actions that I have. I can also cast Shield of face, I believe. Uh, is that a leveled spell? A leveled spell, so you would not be able to. Oh, really? It says one bonus action. Right, but you can only, if you cast a bonus action spell, all the only other spell you can cast on your turn is a cantrip with the casting time of one action. Okay, uh, then I think that's all that she can do. Gotcha! Awesome. We'll go on to Moriah. Right. Um, this is nasty. I don't like this. Um, I'm going to. St- well, hmm. If I stand, I don't know what their range is. It must be far. If I stand behind Melvin, can I see through the door? Uh, yes, it will be difficult to see this one and this one, but you've got a pretty clear sight of this one here. Okay, um, well, that's fine. Um, because all I need is a point in range, and I'm gonna upcast sleep and shoot into the back of the room. Um, to cover all three of them and not Prion. Okay. Um, Doesn't matter if you get me. Well, still. Um, so that and then, okay, so a total of 38 points of hit point value. Wow. That's pretty good. Let's double check. Make sure I don't have anything that can counter this. I'm not seeing it. So cool. Um, they all have the same amount of hit points. So um, we'll call it one, two, three, four, five, six. Go ahead and roll and see which one falls asleep. All right. What is grappling? I rolled a two. Unfortunately, not the one that you are that is being grappled. But this one does indeed fall asleep unconscious. All right. I am satisfied with that. And um, I will actually, with my bonus action, um, yell at Prion, you're stronger than this fucker. Go get him, you big lump. Bardic inspiration. (laughs) Nice. Prion, it is your turn. Uh, Okay. I. So can I hit this thing where I am? No. Oh, I can't. Okay. Correct. So I will es- escape it first. Okay. Roll an athletics or um, athletics. acrobatics check. I rolled a 19, and so that's 24. That is- okay. Yeah, that is your action, and you are able to um, just uh, rip this tentacle off of yourself. I will bonus action... <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> heal myself for second wind. 
because I took a, a bit of a, a tumble there for nine back. Okay. Nine back. And then I will. I'm gonna action, 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 action surge. Action charge. Um, and I, I think these are undead. Yeah, obviously. Um, I will cast not protection. necessarily, but I'm gonna cast it anyway. Protection versus evil and good on myself. Okay. <clears throat> and then I move there. Um. So, as interesting. So, please, as you step into the room here, you feel that altar, that stone obelith there, becomes the center of your attention. And you hear a voice in the back of your head say, Neil. And I need you to make a wisdom saving throw with advantage because of your protection spell. I've already got advantage because it's a charm effect, I'm guessing. It is not, oddly is enough. Not? Wow. But, okay. uh, I rolled a 17 plus 3. 20. Yeah, you are uh, totally fine. You are not affected, though you are still just distracted by this... Um, sort of stone obelisk protruding from the altar. But that's the end of your turn, yes? Yes. Sarayan! Okay. Last, but far from least. Not last. Wasn't Melvin Sorry. last? Melvin's last. I was like, oh, that seems appropriate for the two of them that they would be <laughs> last and second to last. Um, no, you go first. No, you go first. No, no you no, go first. after you. No, after you. <laughs> so, Sarayan... We'll walk up to this baddie. Yeah. And as you enter the room as well, you yeah. hear the word Neil. And you need to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. A twenty. You not natural, but still a twenty. Kneel before no altar. Only the altar of Persona, am I right, ladies? This it's ain't Persona. Hey! So. Hey! Hey! Did you say Prionza? <laughs> the altar of mm. And so I would first like to cast, use my bonus action, to cast Divine Favor, which will add 1d4 to my weapon attacks on a hit. Cool. And then I will use my longsword to attack the gross thing in front of me. So I rolled a 17 to hit. 17's gonna do it. All right, and so 17, and I'm using it one-handed, plus one, seven. Seven. Seven Great. points of damage. Yeah, the sword uh, hits and it kind of cuts into its shoulder. The bones are much more solid and um, and harder to break through than you would think because this creature looks borderline emaciated, but something is strengthening in it. Whatever has caused it to mutate into this terrible form, strengthening, it, strengthening its flesh and bone alike. Um, anything else for Sarayan? Um... No, nothing that wouldn't incur an attack of opportunity, so... Gotcha. All right, uh, Melvin. Um, well, Melvin saw a tentacle uh, coming at him, so he's a little freaked out at the moment. Uh, but he'll, he'll... That was not covered in the Book of Erotic Poetry. Not Maybe even not read the part that, that he read. <laughs> he doesn't know what's in there. <laughs> Um, and he will, uh, 
open his book up and point it at the enemy and a glowing purple uh, tentacle will shoot out of his book and uh, lash out at the one right here. This one in the middle. Uh Uh-huh. As he casts Tasha's Mind Whip. Ooh. Um, For 13 points of psychic damage. All right. Do I get a save versus that? Uh, It is a intelligence save. I have failed. Yep. So... 13 points of psychic damage and on its next turn it must choose whether it gets a move action or bonus action and only gets one of those three boo all right cool anything else um yeah i'm gonna back up behind anaris and cower a little bit what am I, what that'll be my turn he's a really big man she just shakes her head all right, it is my turn. Um, we are going to use. Let's see, how am I looking here? Yeah, this makes sense. Um, there is some garbled, um, sort of guttural speech that comes from this one as it kicks its friend. to wake him up, but that's his turn. And then he uses his second attack, Prion, to try and tentacle you again. And I've got an eight to hit. Whose second attack? Which I know will not hit. The one that I tortured, uh, Mind Whip. It took an attack action, hitting its friend for the first attack. And the second one, Saraian, that you come up, came up and attacked, is going to make a tentacle attack against you. Uh, I don't believe 14 comes anywhere near hitting. Um, how about... This is in the way. Uh, does 15 hit you? All right. So the tentacles just continue to thrash and impact against your armor, but having no effect. Daenerys, we're back to you. Unmuted there. Perfect. I am going to be like, I don't think so, kid. And I'm going to move behind Melvin as long as I can still see the door. And Anaris is going to take out her short bow and attempt to attack. Oh, yeah. Seven does not hit. Seven does not, I'm sorry to say. I have no... got nothing left. That's all I got. Okay. All right, Mariah. Mutant. Uh, quick, yeah, uh, quick point of clarification. Did he attack the other guy to wake him up? He did. Okay. Interesting. Not so much in the camaraderie with these guys. Um... Oh... What shall we do here? Uh, I will, uh, I will pull out my violin and pluck a few quick notes and whistle them to reverberate them across the, uh, the deck and into the room and into the mind of this fellow over here who needs to make a save against wouldn't you know it? Dissonant whispers. Oh, wow. You never. I've got a 21 on the save, but All I right. think I'm still. Well, still I don't. Six psychic damage. Yeah. Okay. I don't need to subtract the d4 because he's well saved above that. So. Yep. It's all good. And that, that was this. Actually, it wasn't even the guy who was Bane, though. So. Oh, it was this guy. Okay. Yeah. My fault. And, uh, I think that will be my turn. Prion. Uh, so the other one below him has just woken up, yeah? Yeah. He thinks about He's still prone, though, has not had his turn. Yeah. He's not too Whack him! But, 
a seagull does come in and fly in the face of the one in front of him. And he goes to strike at the one in front. So that is the main dang danger right now. And that is a 16 and a 12. The 16 is going to be lots. And that is firing a booming blade down it. So okay, 16 is your number. 1d6 plus 3 damage. Oh, for God's sake. 4 damage. <laughs> wow. All right. But he has sheathed in booming energy, yes? He does, yeah. All right. Is that it for Breon? Um, yes, I think that's all I get. Sarayan! Okay. So, Sarayan, recognizing that her initial unpowered attack didn't quite do the damage she was hoping or anticipating. Very quiet. Hi, I'm here now. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, Sarayan will... This is so bizarre. It's turning into my background. <laughs> so, Sarayan will uh, call on Persona and use Divine Smite. Again. So, you do that when you hit the target. You can, ah. That's when you choose to use the smite. Well, nifty so, thrifty. Let's yeah, just yeah. assume I'm going to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see what the dice say. Okay, so I will use my longsword to again attack the one directly in front of me. Mm-hmm. Boop. Mm, 13. Are you going with that 13? I, I don't think I have anything else that I could add. Uh, okay. As far as I know. Unless I'm forgetting something, I don't think I have anything else. No, then unfortunately with your second strike, it doesn't quite pierce this flesh. And indeed it wraps one of these other sort of side tentacles emerging from its rib cage and tries to even grab the sword and you pull it back um, and it slices it off, but it seems to cause it no pain. He's not been able to cause it damage. Okay. And so then I do have a question. Uh huh. So I have the option for two weapon fighting, does one of these, the I have a longsword and a javelin. So would the javelin count as a light weapon that I could then use on my bonus action? It's not light, uh, but- a shield out as well. But if you're wearing it, if you're using a shield, that takes your other arm. Let me see, I do believe I have a shield. Yes, I have a shield equipped. So in that case, that's, so that's in your other anyway. hand. Correct. It takes I an see. action okay. to put a shield away. Ah, thanks, Brenda. All right. Mm -hmm. Then that is my turn. Melvin. Um, well, I'm going to take a look at the this, this one again that I mind whipped last time. And this time I'm going to uh, use my bonus action to summon my quill into my hand and then I'll make a check mark that runs off the edge of my page and I'm casting a uh, mind sliver at him. Uh, okay, could you I, ping which one again? Uh, the middle one, right in front of Priam. All right. And uh, he needs to make a uh, int save, DC 14. I have failed. I have a 13. All right, two points of psychic damage and... Um, subtracted d4 from the next saving throw it makes before the end of my next turn okay gotcha and, that's the, um, their and then i will move behind an Eris again okay it is their turn once again this one will stand up and oof, these are hard targets to hit um Yeah. This one will stand up, and you put me to sleep, and I didn't like it, so it will reach out towards you, Mariah. A tentacle snaps out in your direction. Yeah. Uh, 14? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am Nine not the tank I used to be. bludgeoning damage, and you are grappled, and um, you will also feel it just kind of starting to feel its way around your flesh and start to try to drain the life. <gasps> it is. Just 
Thank you. Ah, that brings it down to a 10. Does not hit. Does not hit. All what right, then we'll use a second tentacle welcome. with a 22. Uh, we'll take that uh, nine points of bludgeoning. I would like to cutting words that with a reaction and lower the damage. Okay. Uh, so I will kind of side, kind of touch the side a little bit and be like, you're really fucking ugly. And I hope that hurts you emotionally and physically. <laughs> I'm really, really good at this, guys. <laughs> uh, I rolled a three. Uh, so that reduces to six damage. Six bludgeoning. Okay. All right. Prion, we got one coming at you. I'm just imagining Oops. that this, like, thing, it just you see it, self-esteem just crumble. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. tears sliding down. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it has just these black vacant holes where eyes should be. Nope. Oh, Which is even worse if tears start rolling down. Where are they coming it from? It is. <laughs> it's just two tentacles that just start to creep their <laughs> way down its cheeks. <laughs> uh, Priyan, I have a 24 to hit. Is that a disadvantage? It is not a disadvantage. Oh, it's got a minus a d4, so 23 to hit you. Do they not get a disadvantage against me? It's got a minus a d4, right? This one has a minus d4 on its save. I've I've got protection versus evil and good. Um, it is not undead. Oh, so not any of them then. Protection nope. works for aberrations and a couple of other things. I thought it was... Oh, you're right. It is aberrations. I didn't see that in there. My fault. Okay, uh, then I've got a 22 to hit you. With a minus... M 21. God, doesn't have a, it doesn't have a D4 minus, does it? Yes. No, it's just for the that next one? saving throw yeah. it makes. Okay. But Bane's so, got a D4 minus. So 22 to hit you. Um, I'm going to shield it. Okay. Your AC is mega right now, so I just have to crit 26. fish on this next one with the disadvantage. Oh, that was a good roll, too. But 21 is not going to do it versus your ridiculous AC right now. So the next one that is baned is going to use its uh, attack to try and um, wrap up our dear Saray in here. First attack is a 17. Nope. Not going to do it. Come on. You can do it. No, oh, no, no, and no, I have no, a no, 9. No, no. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> no. Not working. Not working so well. All right, Inaris. Ugh, you little shit. Really? As I go behind Melvin, and I am going to attack with my short bow, and she is going to balance on the top of his head and take aim. Please hit. That is an 18. Oh, yeah, that hits. Awesome. You have and sneak attack as well. Awesome. Did it do? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. So, 11 damage. She says, eat shit for the Raven Queen. <laughs> Very nice. You you send one of those arrows straight into the eye socket, which emerges there with a stalk uh, just set into the skull, but it doesn't seem to die, but seems to have damaged it a lot. Now has an eye stock. Anything else from Inaris? That's it. Good. Moriah, you are grappled. Oh, I don't appreciate that. That just means I can't move though, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, you know what though? Um, so I feel really, really disgusted as these tentacles have wrapped around me and are starting to, oh, no, that, I'm so not okay with this. And as I'm thinking about how much I don't want to be where I am right now, I suddenly poof away in a strange little puff of purple smoke and appear uh, 30 feet back. Oh, cool. Misty Step. Indeed. <laughs> oh, that was weird. And a disappointed um, tentacle just writhes in place. Uh, disappointed yeah. tentacle. <laughs> um, we'll come back to that at a later date, I say, as I level my crossbow. 
<laughs> and shoot at him. All right. Don't make promises you can't keep. <laughs> 15. Unfortunately, 15, it is just a little bit quick, and you see it dodge out of the way of that bolt. All right. You mother Disappointed. Breon. Um, seeing him try to go past me, the seagull will swing towards him, and I will attack that one behind me with the bane. And that is a 10 and an 8. Uh, that is, and I'm going to use the inspiration that Mariah gave me, which is a D8, I believe. Uh, no? I think you're still a D6. Six. Still a D6. Still okay. level six, I think. That's a three, so that turns that into an 18. 18 hits. This is with, again, with a booming blade. And that's it's better the one in damage. Front of you, yeah? Behind me. The one with the spade. Okay. The one that's trying to get past me, and that's eight yeah, gotcha. damage. Eight damage. Very good. Um, eight. A solid blow. Brian, are you done with your turn? I am done indeed. Serayan. Okay, so I'm going to try again to attack the monster right in front of me uh-huh. with my longsword yet again. So let me roll. Ooh, woo! I critted. And nice. so then I also want to do Divine Smite. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, smite, 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 smite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yee. I'm so All excited right. for you. That's an extra, an extra 4d8, yeah? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And let's. So, oh, okay. So then, do I just roll? Pick the yeah. you just do the two, two, two d eight, maybe. Okay. Yeah, just click two d eight twice. Awesome. So nice. ten, and my second seven. Thirty damage total. Thirty damage total. Zoran, you bring the wrath of Persana down onto this. This blade sings with the coursing of the ocean and. Indeed, Prion, you see, feel a bit of salt water sort of splash across your face as this blade is um, gushing with ocean water, and you bisect the creature in half with this divine smite fueled by your deity persona. Very good. Well done. That was an enormous amount of damage. Yay! That was Thanks awesome. be to persona. <laughs> Indeed. Anything else for you? Uh, no. All right. Uh, Melvin. Um, that one in the back that I hit last time, how's he looking? Uh, Prion put some good pain on him before, um, turning to the one that was going towards you guys, so. Okay, um, well, I guess tentacles are kind of a theme right now. Um, and I'll open up my book again, point it in its direction, and I will once again cast Tasha's Mind Whip um, at it as a purple tentacle will spring out of my book. I need an intelligence save, DC 14, and please remember it has a negative D4 to that roll. It fails. I've gotten 11. Uh, 10 points of psychic damage to him, and on its next turn, it can only take one of action, move, or bonus action. This one crumples to the ground. Perfect. Even better. <laughs> Life leaving it. Brings us to their turn. This one got two targets. You turned around and hurt me, Prion, so let's see what we can do here. You can run if you like. Nah. We've got an 8 to hit and a 15 to hit. Oh, I had some good numbers in there. That's disappointing. Daenerys. So I'm going to take another stab at it with my short bow. Nothing fantastical, fancy. 17 to hit. Hits. So, and I should still have my sneak attack. That mm -hmm. is 15 points of damage. Ooh, an excellent strike. Daenerys, the final blow against this one is yours. 
And my favorite way, same way as my grandpa used to always say, I shoot it right between the eyes. <laughs> All right, so you already have one my sticking out of its eye socket, but this time you pick a bit of skull between it and you see that it just caves in the skull that leaves a big hole combining both eye sockets and then sort of a bit of skull, some tentacles and other gore splatter across Prion as the arrow um, fires harmlessly away out of the back of its head. And you all hear a... <laughs> coming from below the deck and that is where we will leave off for tonight dun dun dun